shortly, probably already. Welcome everyone, this is Andres Restart. I am joined by Brandon from What About Nintendo. The link to his channel should be in the description below. I really hope I left it there. It should be there. It should, it should be there for the last Better week. Be there. If it's there, it is there. Um, and we're going to be talking about Nintendo, because that's what we do every week. At Monday night, num Monday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, for you, it's what, 8 p.m.? Central yeah. time, right? Yeah, Central time. In Japan, it's 8 p.m. Central. I don't know what time it would be in Japan, but I yeah. have no clue. Eastern time, 9 p.m. Monday nights. So just to go over the topics before I reference the chat and then get into everything, because there's a lot. We were talking a little bit about the Pokemon news that came out, like on Friday. We had Worlds this weekend. So they brought another trailer for Pokemon Sword and Shield, kind of talking about some of the competitive elements for Pokemon, which are very exciting to me. Maybe not as exciting to other people who don't really care too much about the competitive elements, but there are some interesting things there that I think even casual fans will find interesting. So we'll talk about that for a bit. Then we'll be talking about Super Nintendo games potentially coming to the Nintendo Switch. We'll talk exactly, we'll be, well, it's happening, but we'll explain why we we're pretty sure it's happening. Then we'll talk about a town. We got a, a new um, name for it, apparently, Little Town Hero, it seems. So we'll talk about that. Then we'll talk a little about a little bit about Indie World. Um, just kind of talking about a couple of games that we saw there that we thought were interesting. And then we'll be talking about Rare IP maybe coming to the Nintendo Switch. Rare IP as in franchises from Rare, like Conquer, Banjo, Jet Force Gemini, things of that nature. The games that we sort of saw back on the N64. We'll talk about that. And then we'll sort of jump into some speculation about when we can see the next Nintendo Direct. Mainly I'm just doing this because I had a video on it this weekend. And I feel like as right. more information comes out, it kind of... Op it it kind of make, it, it makes... It's building a narrative here, like there's a certain mm -hmm. picture that's coming together as we learn more and more about more about the different things that are coming out this year. So we're gonna be talking about all of that today, and it should be fun. I'm telling you, it's fun. So yeah. stay here, leave a like, that do it. We're, we're, we're talking about Nintendo stuff. So let's check in with the chat. Um, while I get that up, Brandon, uh, how about you? Uh, you know, you talk about yourself. Let everyone know how you're doing. Let them know that you are yeah. alive and kicking. Yeah, yeah, my channel was kind of kind of dead for a bit there. We're all like, dead. <laughs> all dead inside. Um, Indeed. Uh, it was just kind of, I was sick. I wasn't able to do a bunch. And my sister is moving back across the world. She was here. She's moving to the Philippines. So we had a lot to do there. So it's just been a lot, just been busy. Um, but it's, it's getting, we're getting back on track. I released two videos last week. I think two or three streams too. Uh, this week, I plan to do more videos. I definitely want to talk about the games that interested me in the indie world. Um, of course, we're going to talk about the podcast, but I'll make a video on it too, going more in depth on each game. And then I just, you know, I got some, other, I got some other things planned. So stay, stay tuned for that. But the content should be a lot better now because uh, it's just, you know, things have slowed down more, which is good. Yeah. So he's back. Watch him. Yeah. His channel. It's the link. I think he's in the description below. I haven't checked. I'm pretty right sure, man. It's like there every week. So, yes, it's it there. is there. there. Along with Duo Plays, who's not here this week. I thought about inviting him. I probably should have, but I, I was too late. Mm -hmm. um, because he also loves Pokemon. We got a lot of interesting Pokemon information. Right. So we're going to get into that in a moment. But first, let's say hi to people in the chat. And then we will get started with everything. Hello there, Brandon the Stallion. How you doing? Hyrule Warriors Gaming. Hello. Super Chris. What's up? Cyber Slayer. Yeah, we are, we are getting this on the road. Random gaming dude. Hola. Como estas? Yo estoy bien. Evening, Vooper. How you doing? Savage64, what's up? Cosmic Sir. Yes, it, uh, it, I hope it's a good evening. Science Joe. This is what he's saying something interesting here. Maybe. Maybe. I haven't read it yet, but I see something. I feel like I'm going to read it, so I'm reading it. It's interesting. I know. I don't, I don't know. I haven't read it yet. But I have faith. Anyway, he's saying... <laughs> I hate after indie directs, people start complaining about no Smash reveals or Animal Crossing. Uh, For real. Yeah. Um, messaging. I mean, I think it was very clear. It's about indie stuff, right? But at the end of the indie world presentation, they're like, oh, we have one more thing. I bet some people are like, oh my god, they're going to reveal Sans for Smash. No. No. Um, but actually, I think it was really interesting because they talked about or in the Blind Forest, they confirmed that game, which is a Microsoft game, which further validates a whole bunch of rumors about Microsoft games and Game Pass coming to the Switch, which 
Orient in itself is really cool, right? We already got Cuphead. That's really cool. There's another game, like, what is it? Lucky's Tale or something like that? That's from Super Microsoft. Lucky's Super Lucky's Tale. That's also coming to Switch. But and I was going to save this for later, but I'll just kind of run it off right now. Those rumors came alongside discussions for Gears coming to Switch or Master Chief Collection, you know, Halo coming to Switch or even Rare Replay coming to Switch, which if you, that kind of also sort of complements the possibility of a banjo coming to the switch right like for sure we're getting banjo on smash brothers that's already confirmed but there were listings for banjo kazooie as well so we're gonna be getting to that later but you know the ori thing for me is exciting just because it validates a rumor um but right. there were some cool little indie games so we'll talk about that in a bit and definitely whenever nintendo says it's gonna be an indie thing it's gonna be an indie thing don't expect anything else it's indie stuff right yeah everybody was like whoa they might announce something no no don't don't do that mm. No. Yeah, so let's see what's going on here. Cycly, hello! Oh my god! Brandon the Stallion added me. I want GameCube games on Switch, but not for, for the games most people want. I want Mario Party 4 through 7 on Switch. I grew up on GameCube Mario Party games, so if I could have it all, you could die happy. Um, <laughs> well, I like Mario Party, so, you know. Yeah. And it's, you can never have enough Mario Party. But, you know, let's, uh, wait, 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 Cosmos, you're saying, have you heard the rumors about all three Earthball games getting remade? Did the rumor come from me? <laughs> Just yeah. talking about it, will it get into existence? Or is there something more? Because I did not I've, hear I've about not this. I've not heard about, I'm not Oh, heard I have to do this, a quick Google search right now. If you guys got a link. Oh, man, is this, is this yeah. legit? Earthbound remake. I haven't heard anything of this. Leak, leak, a leak. No. No, it was from 2015. No. Wait. Wait. We might have something. I don't know. No. Wait. Oh, uh, from like 2014, was... a trilogy Wii U remake. <laughs> oh, oh no. I don't know, man. If you if you got a link, I feel like if I'll check it out. Did happen? I, I like. We should have probably have seen it. If it was like really credible, you know. But maybe not. So let us let us let us know. Yeah. You got a link or something. Yeah. A uh, shout out next is saying Earthbound games aren't being remade. Mother Three is coming out eventually, though. I do believe that. I definitely do believe that. Hmm. Okay. Cycle saying the, the Mother remake is fake. Unfortunately, that yeah that mm. that's usually the case when it comes to anything about Mother. For real. Yeah. So actually, um, hello there, Solo Jones. He's saying, did you hear hashtag 1000 year door remake was trending on Twitter a while back? I did not hear about that. Um, remake, remake Paper Mario 1000 year door was, yeah, was, was a big that, that's hashtag just a, for a while. People were really pushing for that. Uh, but the GameCube was trending last week, actually. All kinds of weird systems. Yeah, last why? Week. They just, <laughs> people are willing it into being. Um, the Wii U was trending, I think, last week. That was weird. Uh, no, Earthbound would not be considered an indie game. No. No. Although there are a lot of games that might come out around today that might seem a lot like Earthbound, uh, that today might be considered an indie game. Indie, technically, like, you know, indie is basically just, like, a small studio that's developing a game, right, that mm -hmm. doesn't have, like, a massive team. They're independent indie, right. right? That's really what it is. Like, it's not like they have, like, Nintendo or Sega, like, really pushing them, publishing it, giving them this huge budget, right. this massive team. It's usually just a small group of people working on a game, and that that's pretty much it. So that's usually how you can define an indie. And because it's usually a small team, that's usually why it's a smaller game. They usually kind of rely more on an interesting art style and concept to really sell the game as opposed to it just being a big open world with a massive budget. Because that's what they can pull off, but, you know, they just focus on the concept, the gameplay, and a lot of people really appreciate that. So, mm -hmm. that we saw a lot of that during Indie World. There's a, a few games that I thought were really interesting. But let's uh, kind of jump into the topics here, right? Let's not go 45 minutes without talking about any of the topics, because we did that last week. Um, Pokemon news. So, I'm just going to pull up this Twitter thread. It's right over here. I promise. I'm not lying. I think. I'm never too sure about myself. All right, so we got this gallery research update, uh, basically as Worlds is starting this weekend, and they talk about a lot of different things. 
Now, I I realize that for most of you, you probably don't care about the, the specific like little items for each Pokemon, but they have items for each Pokemon that are have competitive implications, which is really cool, right? But they also talked about how there would be rentals coming back and online competitions. You can host your own competitions now. That's, cool. That's really interesting to me. Um, you know, they're, they're bringing back ranked battles. These were things that were not in Let's Go. So, you know, in case you were concerned, this is all coming back. It looks like it's going to be a bit more fleshed out than before, which is really cool. I'll just read this. Here's how ranked battles work. Each rank belongs to a specific tier. The top tier is where trainers aim to become the best in the world. Ranked battles also have seasons. Once a season is over, your rank gets adjusted, then a new season begins. So it's not really too different from the way it was before in Pokemon, but they have a tier system now, not just a rating number. And it, if I saw correctly, it ranged from Pokeball to Master Ball and then Pokemon yeah. Master or something. There's an image somewhere. Um, There's like an on image. This. There's like a pyramids or yeah I have to, I have to look, look it up in a moment but you know they talk about various other things as well like here you can set up your own tournaments I, I just think the game looks pretty man like you know a lot of people like to really yeah. kind of shit on this game's graphics but I think it looks really sharp and it, it just kind of pop it, it, it feels I think it's it is like a minimalist design but mm -hmm. it looks good to me you know, I mean, Brandon, yeah. I, you're, you're more of the... This is not the best image to show off on the podcast, but, you know, it's just kind of like I'm just... Oh, you have something else? Yeah, it, it's not a, oh, not that big of a, of a showcase, but, you know, I just think it looks nice. Yeah, I mean, it looks simple, I think. Uh, I Overall, I'd say the game actually looks less simple than most Pokemon games. Um, when you compare them, like, the textures on, like, say, Sun and Moon are pretty much, like, mostly one color or, like, yeah. two colors. Like, this one has, like, a lot more detail to the textures and, like, right. the environments and stuff. The, the environment's it's definitely, definitely more... It's definitely less simplistic than, say, Town. I think Town looks a lot cleaner, I think, mm. than Sword and Shield. But Sword and Shield looks more detailed. It's a little more intricate than the graphics in town so i don't know i think i think it looks good it's I, it doesn't obviously it's not reaching the full potential of what the switch can do um but i think it looks good enough for now hmm so um no yeah, man you know I'm, I'm i'm gonna i i think the game looks great obviously but there's a couple other things. I, I was already skilled going down the thread. I already see people like talking trash about Pokemon. So, <laughs> oh my god! Like, okay, no, no, we're not, we're not talking about that. We're done. We've talked about that way too much. Um, oh, the cartridge size. That doesn't even take into account the HD assets take up way more space than. No, it's HD also assets. assuming that it, it's there's it's also stupid. An open world it's really dumb. It's really dumb. Assets. I'm not gonna even give it any attention. Uh, besides the, the attention like I've already given it. Oh, look at the PS2. We we fit things in megabytes now over here on the Xbox and Switch. We got gigabytes. Plus. So one Sounds. thing that um, I saw that was kind of interesting to me was that they said that there are two formats for battles in Sword and Shield: single battles and double battles, mm -hmm. which is not me by saying that there's you know they're not talking about triples or rotations. Like there's not that many other battle modes, but I actually think that might be a good thing like if they just focus on just singles and doubles and make sure that those two modes are very well fleshed out and ironed out and, and they work well that's all you really need i don't really need all the extra mm -hmm. stuff if those two modes are done really well. it's basically just kind of like prioritizing that right like right. like for example like super smash Bros. ultimate doesn't have every single thing that you've ever seen in a smash game before but what it has it's kind of like very refined Right, so that's kind of the impression that I'm getting from what Game Freak's trying to do with Sword and Shield. Like, they're trying to, like, for example, there's not going to be every single Pokemon, but by doing that, that's enabling them to really focus on the overall quality of the game, right? Um, so I am hoping, right, fingers crossed, that the game is refined in a number of ways. Although, um, Vooper actually pointed out to me earlier in the week, right, uh, that, where was it? That apparently she saw that i think she i don't know if it was from this image but we haven't seen confirmation that we can do 66 singles battles which if that's the case that's dumb um i really hope that that we can have 66 singles battles um in ranked fights 
Uh, I hope so, but from this, it just shows 3v3. You can see the three Pokeballs on each side. I hope there's at least some customization there. You know, I mean, I think the one thing, though, right, is that you look at the fan base for, for Pokemon, right? Like, and if Pokemon doesn't say something is happening, everyone just assumes it's not happening, right? right. Like, it, they can't talk about every little thing immediately. So I'm just going to give them the benefit of the doubt and hope there's some other options there that there's a bit more to what we we're seeing about the online. Um, I hope, but again, you know, we don't have confirmation for that either, so, you know, we don't know. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, how, how do you feel about that, Brandon, as a more of a casual fan? Do you feel like, you know, it's okay to just completely be concerned about things that haven't been spoken of yet? Or, like, do you think that maybe it means that there isn't going to be those features, or do you think it's just a matter of time? I, I don't think they obviously can talk about everything, mm -hmm. um, and they obviously can't even. I mean, this is just a tweet, and I think there was a few videos, like very short, like two-minute videos. Like this isn't like, we we didn't get a, a Pokemon direct about the online of Pokemon. Like, we we got like a few short trailers in it and talked about them. So, mm -hmm. obviously, they're not going to cover everything. I think. It's okay to be concerned about it, um, but I don't nope, think you can nope, assume stop. right off the Sorry. bat that it's not there, like they don't exist, you know? I was trying to play the trailer without it, but then it made noise on the Twitter. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, um, there, I, I think they, I don't know, I don't think we can straight up just say that it's, it's not going to be there, because we don't know. And obviously they can't go into every single last little thing about how the online works. They don't do that for any game that has online. They didn't do that for Smash. They didn't do that for Splatoon. They don't do that. It's, it's, it's just too much. There's always little intricacies that they're not going to talk about because they'd be there forever. Yeah, but we also don't know if the, those intricacies will be there, right? To be fair on both ends. I think... Um... We'll have to wait and see, right? It's one of those things like, so for example, uh, I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna take this off now, right? Um, Fire Emblem Three Houses. Like when we first saw the game, like we saw like different elements of it that were cool, but we weren't sure how fleshed up they would be, how strong the story would be, you know, how well the game would flow, how it would all come together, right? Like, cause we, we see the different elements of it in segments, but we don't know how the whole package is gonna come together, how it's gonna feel and how deep it really is, right? Until really we get closer to release and people start actually playing and hearing about it, right? So even though we know about different elements of Sword and Shield, we're not gonna really know if it's gonna be a good game or a bad game until we kind of see, you know, actually people get their hands, not just on a, an area, right? But actually play through the game. So, you know, I, I guess you can't really say for sure, right? Like. Oftentimes when it comes to, I guess, Nintendo games, right? At least with the big ones, you can usually assume that they're gonna be high quality, right? right? Granted, Game Freak, Pokemon Company, it's a little separate. They kinda, you kinda have to judge them based off how they usually handle Pokemon games, right? And they're always serviceable. Um, so I would imagine Sword and Shield's gonna at least be serviceable. I guess uh, one concern I have actually is when you look at Let's Go, there are some random areas that just have incredible slowdown, like the, um, I believe, Viridian Forest. And it makes no sense. Yeah. That it game, really it looks nice, but it's very simplistic. Very mm -hmm. simplistic. And I understand there's a lot of Pokemon models coming out, but it, to me, it, just, it seems like they just didn't optimize for that, for that area. Because otherwise, it should be able to run that. It just, they didn't bother yeah. to optimize that area. So I'm, I do have that concern, right? Because Game Freak has shown a history that they don't necessarily always have the best frame rate with Pokemon games. Granted, on the 3DS, okay, you know, limitations. They were trying to push it to look at really nice and, you know, it had frame rate issues. But this is on the Switch now. So, you know, right. I'm not going to start attacking them until the game comes out in terms of frame rate. But, you know, Let's Go had some frame rate issues. And that game is way more simple. I will say one thing I was really hoping for when they moved from the 3DS to the Switch was 60 FPS Pokemon, and we're not getting that, even though it really feels like the game should be able to run at 60 frames per second, with how simple it is. Um, that's just always something I thought was weird. Like, why, why can't we have 60 frames per second Pokemon? I think that'd be pretty cool. I'd like that. 
I don't think it's needed. I, I'm no, a, it's not needed. Obviously, just give me. Plays. I'm only asking yeah, for a solid frame rate here. I'm not asking mm -hmm. for a 60. Okay. Give, I'm, I'm, that's all I'm asking for. I'm just asking for a solid frame rate. I don't want to play in an area and I see like seven Pokemon come out of the grass and then all of a sudden I'm chugging like this, right? Like I don't want I don't want that to happen. So hopefully it works out. We will see. I think um, you know even though I'm saying that Let's Go Show is a precedent for there being frame rate issues on the Switch of Pokemon games. You could also make the argument that, hey, Let's Go was kind of like a testing ground for them so they could get a better handle on the hardware, and hopefully with the next game, they will perform better. So, you know, hopefully they, they will. Uh, but let's check in with the chat here, unless there's anything else you guys want to kind of bring up. Um, a fair, fair bit of things said here. Shout out next to some girl who gave me inside info on Smash Ultimate being called that before it was even announced, told me Mother 3 is going to be remade. Okay. Was I that girl, even though I'm a guy? Because <laughs> I've been talking about Mother 3 getting me remade for like two years. Um, maybe more. I think it's just something we want to happen, but hey. You know, maybe. I think it makes sense. I really do. Because there was... The, Nintendo has openly acknowledged a demand for Mother 3. But they have not come out with it, right? Now, Emily Rogers reported on a Mother 3 localization years ago by this point. But it did not happen. And I've said this many times on the channel, Brandon, I know you agree with me. It doesn't mean she was lying or she had falsified information. The plans could have just changed, right? That's what happens when you when you are a leaker and you have inside info. Sometimes you're fed false info because they want to find where the leaks are coming from, right? But also sometimes you get the info and the plans change because they haven't officially announced anything yet, right? So I think there was some discussion of a Mother 3 localization that didn't happen. But there still is this acknowledgement by Nintendo that there is a demand for Mother 3. So what do you do? Maybe, you know, they're not localizing it because they're actually remaking it. Or remastering it, at least. So, you I know, think I don't really think it's crazy. would probably be best. So that it would be most exciting. And change the things that are most likely the reason that it hasn't been brought over to the U.S. yet. Um, without fans being... As right, there were some story elements that some people have debated would be in this sort of political, social environment might not go over as well, or at least there are not things that Nintendo would be willing to take that risk on. So um, maybe, maybe there's something there. So it could just be minor story changes, right? Or, or it's more than that, and I hope it is more than that, but we won't know until it's actually confirmed. So we'll see, but hey, fingers crossed, right? Cycli thinks you need to do some osuing on stream. <laughs> yeah. Shout out next. Honestly, Pierre Mario Thousand Year Door doesn't need a remake. No. It, no. I think it does. I don't think you can play it on anything other than the original GameCube and the Wii again. Did it ever get a re-release on the Wii U? Like a like an eShop thing? I don't remember. I don't think I don't so. If it did. And no. plus, that game kind of looks even even though you think a, a game as simple as Paper Mario would just look amazing at, in HD. No, I've played in HD. It, it looks rough. I had to get a HD texture pack, and an HD texture pack actually oh, looks really well. clean. Oh, so that's why I want a, a remaster because I've seen people remaster the graphics with the HD texture packs, and it looks really good. Um, much better than the game is upscaled to 1080p. Even though you would think you would think that you know just upscaling would be fine because it's it's Paper Mario. It's simple, right? No. I, the textures just don't hold up in the, this day and age. I want a lot of GameCube games to be remade. It's no secret that I want Mario Sunshine to be remade. I think that game could benefit so much because, one, it's a very bright, sunny game, right? Like, look at Wind Waker HD. Look how beautiful that game looks, right? Imagine that for Sunshine. I know the style is a little different, but I, I think you can see where I'm going with it at least, right? And... There are, I understand Sunshine is not considered to be the, the best 3D Mario game, or even even the upper half of them. It's like in the lower half of the 3D Mario games, it's, right? It's like, the worst. Shut up. No. That's, that's <laughs> mm. It's still good. It's just the okay. worst. Okay. All right, all right. We're going to do a quick ranking. Um, 3D Land, I think, counts. That's a 3DS game. If you don't want to count it, that's fine, but the, 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 maybe 3D Land, right? 3D World, 64, 
Sunshine, Galaxy 1, Galaxy 2, Odyssey. Those are, that's it. That, that, that's all of them, right? Galaxy 1, 2, and Odyssey are like in the top 10, 15 most highest rated video games of all time on Metacritic, right? Like they're, maybe it could be like 25, but they're, they're up there, right? They're really high up there. So yeah, those are the best in terms of polish and, you know, perfecting the Mario formula. Which is kind of two different formulas, actually, but whatever. Uh, 64 set the benchmark, but I think 64 has aged the most poorly. Um, I will agree, yeah. yeah. It, it, it needs a remake. Like a complete right. Right. remake. It's called fix Mario the controls, Odyssey. Fix the camera. Ah, it's not the same. It's not the same, but, you know, it's a spiritual I, I successor. What you mean. Yeah. Um, and then there is a. Uh, 3D Land for a 3DS game, I thought was amazing, right? But it was kind of yeah. more like a quasi 2.5D Mario, right? If we're going to count that, I will say Sunshine is at least better than that one. The, I don't know if I'd say it's better than 3D World. Well, he, so here's, he, here's the thing. Um, it, it's just that, like, on the 3DS, my expectations for a 3D Mario game were far lower. So right. I enjoyed 3D Land greatly, and I thought it was fantastic, right? But I also would agree that 3D World, objectively speaking, you know, it, it, it looks better graphically. There's more you can do, right? There's a little the bit more. The design was a lot better, too. And there was the multiplayer, which was good. But I have to be real, though. 3D World left me disappointed um, when it came out. But I still, I, I like, I say it left me disappointed, but it was more because I wanted an Odyssey. I wanted a Mario Odyssey, I wanted a Mario Galaxy. Well, they got was 3D World, and when I eventually got around to playing it, I did enjoy it. I thought multiplayer sucked, though, just for the record. I thought multiplayer was complete trash. It really? just Yeah, no, I don't think it was fun. Okay. No, I really didn't. Um, I just, I, you, you get, maybe I just don't have the right, didn't have the right friends to play with, um, but just kind of like, there is something about just having the characters in that one screen I that- I thought it was better than 2D Mario's multiplayer, like New Super Mario Bros. Okay, style. well, I don't like New that Super either. New Super Mario style is just annoying. I don't, I don't, I don't like each other constantly. It's just frustrating. Yeah, 3D um, World I thought was better because it's a bigger environment. You have more room for everybody to spread out cool. and not be running into each other constantly. I guess for me that with Mario games, I'm really in, into the platforming, right? The actual like, okay, can I get to the here? Like, what can I do? Like, what kind of jump can I do? And I like trying to push the boundaries with that, right? You know, I pretty much always 100% a, Mar a 3D Mario game. So having other people there kind of gets in the way of that. So maybe that's why right. I'm not really into it because I'm more of a, a, a purist when it comes to platforming. So that, that right. could be why, right? And, and then and that's more of a case-by-case -case scenario because that's more for my taste. I care more about that single player focus and just platforming getting from point A to B, however hard that may be, versus multiplayer. Guys, stop messing with me. I need you to get out of the way, right? So. Uh, I, I, I can see I can see your point. Um, anyway, I, I can sunshine. I agree. Sunshine is down there, right? Because I, I, I obviously Galaxy and the, the Galaxy games and Odyssey have to be above it. 3D World, it's not what I wanted, but it was also really well done, um, and I still really enjoyed it. 3D Land, I had lower expectations for, it, which is why I enjoyed it very much. But Sunshine has a special place in my heart, so it. Regardless, I think all of them are good, but I do, my point is, Sunshine needs a remake because those little issues that people have with Sunshine could be rectified with some quality of life changes, right? Maybe scale down the blue coins, right? Work the camera a little bit, things like that, and just add a few more levels, like actual, like new, maybe add a new world, maybe add a couple more, you know, the Shadow Mario levels, and people will really, really love Sunshine. Like, there's not that much more you need to do to make that game amazing. It's already good. It's just, you know, so polishing. Right. It, yeah, I, I think it could be. I don't think a, it's out of the question for a remake to fix most of the issues I had with that game. So I don't. I don't know. But it's also kind of the the level design wasn't the best in my opinion. It was kind of. I don't know. I didn't really like the level design as much as. Shut Switch up. Levels. We're moving on. We're moving on. But this is not a topic. So the game is great. For that long. Yeah, we took. This is just one. This is it. What we're even talking about? We're talking I about. I think we're talking about. Thousand Year Door remake. Right, it's not even the same. Of whatever, right. man. Um, <laughs> Which is a tangent from a comment. Yeah, Cosmics were saying Antonio used to remake their old games like F Zero, Ice Climbers, and Kid Icarus. I'll tell you this. Um, I just want a new F Zero, but for I, it would be really interesting to see 
the ice climbers like how they ice could climbers is modernize much, that by the way the huh? actual like original ice climbers game is absolute trash yeah, it's not it's, it's whatever so bad but imagine just a game that's built around climbing mountains like an actually good i think they could do something with the ice climbers concept and make it actually good but that original game is just the worst it I've could be another platform it's but so it's bad. about going up Right with. The, the, I think they could do some really cool stuff with it. Like imagine they focused on weather elements, be like harsh weather elements affecting you, and platforming and going up. Like you built a build a game around that. There could be something really interesting there, I think. And yeah. also the partner mechanic, it being two player. It could be a co-op game. Oh, a co an actual good co-op plan. No, it's not possible. I I didn't like 3D World. It's not possible. Moving on. It might be possible, but maybe it's just better just have one player control two different characters. Maybe. Yeah. Wooper is saying, let us use six Pokemon online, you cowards. I agree. I 100% agree. When you told me that, I was a little concerned. I hope that we have that as an option. We don't, uh, I guess we don't know yet. Cyber Slayer. They are partnering with Microsoft right now. Sony started with a team up with Nintendo. It's not out of the question to see a team up in the future. We're seeing team ups, man. Everyone's all buddy buddy. So it could happen. Brian Stallion added me. I really want Sinnoh remakes in 2020. Just imagine how beautiful Jubilee City will look like in Sword and, the Sword and Shield engine or Snowpoint City. How detailed the snow could look. It could actually be snowing. Yes. Yes, Brandon Stallion. Um, hey, I'm all for it. Will it happen? I don't know. But I'm all for it. I'm I'm kind of on the, on the frame of mind that Game Freak should maybe take a one-year break. Right? Maybe. Yeah, I, I do agree. I think next year they could just push out town. Push out town, maybe have like a DLC expansion. You know, kind of like what they did with Breath of the Wild or what they're doing with, they did with Xenoblade or um, Fire Emblem. Actually, I think right. Xenoblade would be a great example of what I would want, right? Where they give you extra features and modes to play throughout the main story, right? With the DLC leading up to the main DLC pack, which is an actual new story adventure that offers like. 30 to 40 hours of more gameplay of an actual new campaign. So imagine maybe it would be going to like Kalos or yeah, I, I, th I think that'd be a good idea to like maybe go to Kalos as a DLC expansion right. perhaps or Gen 4, Sinnoh. All, but at the same time, if, it, if uh, as a remake, you know, I think that should be considered maybe its own separate thing. So we could get that maybe like in 2021, for example, or maybe we get, I, I don't, I think this is a possibility. I don't know if I want it, but I just think it's a possibility. Let's go Johto, right? Like, let's go mm -hmm. Syndical Chikorita. I definitely Chikorita. think that's a possibility. I mean, let's go um, Pikachu and Eden sold over 10 million units, like nothing. So I'm just thinking about... I'm wanting to do another one. You know, what, you know what it would be, though? I think it would make more sense for it to be, let's go Meryl and Snubble. Just because, like, for Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, it wasn't the three main starters, right? It was two other Pokemon that were kind of like the popular Pokemon for that gen that weren't the starters. Right. So I'm thinking about what were the two that were kind of like that for Johto. And I believe it was pretty much Meryl and Snubble. So that'd be neat. Although they're both fairy type. One's water fairy, one's just fairy. I don't know. I don't know if it'll actually happen. And Let's Go might just be a one-off. We'll see. But I definitely would prefer a Sinnoh remake or like a DLC expansion in 2020 for Sword and Shield. We'll see what happens, though. I, what I, Super Chris, yeah, I agree. Um, fans from many communities can be very toxic. Absolutely. Cosmixer, yeah. I want a cookie. Yep. <laughs> Cycle, you're gonna buy a 2K PC. That $2,000 debt. I'd be hyped for that as well. Indeed. Oh, yeah. Vooper just said Super Mario Sunshine is better than Super Mario 64. Change my mind. I will say Change the it. controls are definitely better, but the level design in 64 is better. Your, your fingers will not bleed while playing Mario Sunshine. <laughs> Mario 64 will make your fingers bleed, at least internally. Might make your eyes bleed. That too. Um, that game needs a remake, but the core level design itself is still really good. I think it's very strong. I I, I do I do wish there were more world in the sunshine. I think I beat sunshine like 
less than 10 hours. But I didn't do all the blue coin missions because I thought those were like really dumb. First off, I haven't played Sunshine in years. I really I want a remake because I don't have a functioning GameCube with Sunshine right now. Either A, I have to go back and get, I have to go buy one like at an old game shop or something or eBay. Right. Or you could buy a Wii that's backwards compatible. My brother bought one. They're pretty cheap. I could do that. But the GameCube looks cooler. That's true. I feel like Wii's don't age as well. I I know, but Wii's just don't. It just I could play Wii games on my Wii U. On the Wii, I think they don't they upscale it to sixteen by nine if you play the GameCube games on the Wii. I don't remember. They do something that makes the games look better. Progressively scan my GameCube games. All right. Oh God! If you actually want like a good wait, isn't there? They have like special like HDMI like outputters. Um. Yeah, they're like one hundred and fifty dollars though. If you want like actually clean signal from the game you're gonna have to pay a lot of money yeah but that might be better to get a wii then i mean if i'm already gonna go out and find <sighs> i guess i could maybe find a gamecube for cheap right but I, I feel like is it okay part of it is just me wanting to go and collect and have these again right mm -hmm. um to kind of like preservation of history yeah, I, i'd like to buy a gamecube just to have it even if i don't play it right but if i'm gonna go ahead and get one i'd maybe like to run it as best as i can so, and on top of that, technically my Wii U can play Wii games. I don't have a functioning Wii or GameCube anymore. It's very sad. I had these. This this, they yeah. don't exist. Yeah, they, I had a functioning 64 too. It's just gone. Now. All my old systems, they're all gone. Sad day. When your parents decide it's time for a garage sale, your old systems get 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 the shaft. Mm -hmm. Cyberstar is saying 3D World is a different formula than 64 or Odyssey. It does, and I didn't yeah. like it. <laughs> it it's uh, it, it's not that I, I dislike it. It's just mm -hmm. I prefer the open sandbox worlds right. that you can explore. I do too. I would like if they did 3D world style more than doing. Well, like, I think a Odyssey new had the right balance because you one. could, you still had those like linear levels within the open levels. Right, like you could find those right, in them. Right, but it's them. not a multiplayer game. Like, it, if they're gonna make oh, it I don't another, care. I like, really, I don't care about that, Brandon. I just don't care about that at all. I know, but there, there's an audience who likes is the, like, there... the 2D multiplayer <sighs> games. It's a reason that New Super Mario Brothers Wii U Deluxe sold really well. Um, I would, I rather play if I'm gonna play a, a Mario game for multiplayer. I'd rather play 3D World than any of the the modern 2D ones because they're they're. You know, I kind of actually like what they did with the um, Luigi Balloon DLC in Mario Odyssey, mm -hmm. where you could just kind of do like time trial challenges, right? I, I never really got into those, but I You're think they were wrong. a cool concept. You're wrong. I, I'm You're not wrong into for not that getting into it. aspect of 3D Mario, or yeah. 3D Mario so much mm -hmm. as you are. Like, you, no. you really like like this, like the ridiculous platforming challenges. Yeah, I do. It's I'm good. more like the exploration. Are you trying to you trying to say I don't like exploring? I no, like I'm finding saying, balloons. That's, that's my favorite part of the 3D Mario. Games. You don't like seeing these areas that look like you can't get to them, but then finding a way to get the, to them. Isn't that like that is the adventurous, explorative nature, like reaching out to that? I I do like that. It's just I don't know. I like it in a different way. I think. No, I, I'm, I'm just pulling your leg, man. I, I you, completely get it. You like to it. purposely do jumps that are uh, ridiculous. Not needed yes. At all. Did I ever show you that time that you can like? So in the there's a snow level in Mario Odyssey with all the what are they called? Are they? I don't remember how they look anymore, man. But they wear they're like Eskimo people. Yeah, I know people. what you're talking about. You can clip into the ice into the racetrack and explore it. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it is very interesting. I think I heard about this. I never actually did it myself. Yeah, no, I, I like doing it every once in a while, but if you... it's, It takes me a while to remember how to clip through, but you can still clip through. That's cool. Those are the kind of things that developers shouldn't patch, in my opinion, unless they actually break the game. Like, glitches like that can be fun. Like, don't don't go patch those. Don't fix it. Oh, man. It's nice broken like that. Shadow of Nexus just broke my heart. He said, nope, Sunshine doesn't have progressive scan. This can't be. Well, they really? more reason to get that to get that HDMI outputter thing. 
Oh, I see Marcos Martins. Guys, did you see that tourist indie game? Man, if we see Mother in the same art style, it will be nuts. There's so much potential by looking at Octopath Link's Waking now as well. I, I'm, yeah. I'm with you. I think Shinnan did a really good job with tourist. We're going to talk about it in a bit. Uh, I think that game looks gorgeous. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And, uh... Man, I was gonna make a video about it this week. I'm still gonna make a video about it this week, but I think the reason there wasn't any paid DLC for Mario Odyssey is because they are working on a sequel. So, yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I'm, I, I just see Sabbath and Sun talking about it. So, yep, I think it's happening, man. But let's uh, let's let's jump into the next topic. Yep, we're doing that because yep. we're on 40 minutes in. We haven't even covered one topic. <laughs> typical uh, of us. Typical, highly. So. SNES games are probably coming to the Nintendo Switch. Why am I saying that? Because I'm right. Um, more, no, I'm joking aside. The reason why is because, well, one, we saw a data mine early on in the year with a lot of Super Nintendo games, right? Two, it kind of makes sense, right? Like, everyone's been yeah. begging for Super Nintendo games to come. That's the kind of thing that could, Nintendo could easily do and add a lot more value to Nintendo's online. But the reason we're talking about it now is because recently, we saw an FCC filing by Nintendo for a new Super Nintendo wireless controller that is basically a lot like the NES wireless controller that was for Nintendo Online on the Switch. So this seems like the Super Nintendo version for the Switch. And when we got the NES controller, what did we get? The NES games, Nintendo Online. So this implies Super Nintendo games are right around the corner as well. Right, And it makes sense because with the with the SNES games we saw earlier in the year, we also saw the little symbol that indicated SNES controllers were hooked up. Yep. yep. So that that goes right along with it's that. It's within the firmware. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Nintendo's planning for it. It's there, right? I mean, another great point, actually, I like that you brought that up, is because you used to talk about, before we knew, before we had the confirmation for the Switch Lite or the, the other Switch version 2 or whatever, right, that within the firmware, there was multiple... They had multiple switches in mind within the firmware already, right? So if you look at the, the firmware and, and the coding of, of, of the Switch operating system, it can suggest what Nintendo already has planned in the near future. Right. So, um, yeah, I think I 100% think it's happening. Mm -hmm. And I we just, are coming up on the uh, one-year anniversary of Switch Online. September 18th, I believe. Yeah. Right. So um, that, that makes a lot of sense. It does. So, do you think they're going to make the announcement on September 18th? With their NES game updates, all, all their, like, online updates, they just put out, like, tweets in a short trailer. Yeah. So, I think they'll do the same thing here. I think they'll just put out, like, a two, three-minute trailer at most and a tweet, and that's all they'll do. Probably on the same day it launches, as that's what they do with all their I NES agree. Games well. I think it's more likely going to be separate from a Nintendo Direct. Yeah, there's no reason to put it in a Nintendo Direct. It's yeah. Wasting space. Yeah. Um, some people have been suggesting, in fact, a lot of rumors and leakers have been suggesting that it would cost more money, which I am like, please, God, no. No, I don't want to pay more money just for SNES games. I want it to just be included in my service. <laughs> Oof. If if, I if all feel they like did, I too much. if all they did was just bump up the price and the only feature you get in addition to everything else is Super Nintendo games, no. Now, if it was Super Nintendo games, N64 games, GameCube games, Wii games, and they were all upscaled to HD, yes. Right. But if it's just Super Nintendo games, no, no, mm -hmm. that I won't. I already I have a Super Nintendo Classic, right? Um. The only game I really feel like it's missing is Chrono Trigger. So, I don't really, I just don't feel a strong desire yeah. to, I, I don't feel like I paying more for just I right Super now, Nintendo if they did that, I would not pay for it. I will say though, that if I had, if they just add it for free, I'm way more likely to play <laughs> Super Nintendo games on my Switch than I am with an SNES Classic. Yeah, it's, it's much more convenient. You know, I've got yeah. System. Also, I only have two HDMI ports on my television, so. <laughs> Yeah. I, I need to get a splitter because I have like seven devices that I could use on it. And I, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there, there's that little issue. Yeah, my monitor in here only has two. My TV in my living room is like five. It's pretty great. I, Unfortunately, I, I don't play games out there though. So. Yeah. 
I I see um an interesting. I'm assuming it's a joke, but Cyrus Slayer saying nah, no SNES games with Switch doesn't have the Mode Seven chip. You just can't run it, man. You can't just run can't the Super Nintendo it. games. Mm -hmm. So if you guys don't know, now I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I, re I remember this correctly. Mode Seven is basically this chip that allowed for like pseudo 3d environments within like super nintendo games right and i think it allowed the super nintendo to actually draw polygons but not that many right like there's a one game that used it was f zero right like you could a race around so mario kart it. used it as well there were certain games that just used it for like specific effects and stuff and of course you got uh star fox which used it heavily in Star Fox. Yeah, that's thing. it's kind of nuts. It's just, it just it, if, you, if you look at that game, you feel like it should not exist on the Super Nintendo. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Uh, but now that they know how to emulate the Mode 7 ship very well with the Super NES Classic, we can uh, get some actual good emulation because that was actually a legitimate issue um, emulating what that ship did because it's kind of weird. I don't know exactly how it works, but apparently it works kind of strangely. I won't pretend to know the ins and outs of that. I just knew it was an issue. Yeah, I, I vaguely remember it, so. Um, Hooper is saying that it wasn't a chip, it was just a mode. Interesting. Oh man, Cycli has shit. wished me a happy birthday. Uh, yeah, my birthday was is October 29th, so. Oh, okay. We're, like, your, we're, we're, we're right? actually getting close to the next one. So, but I, I appreciate the wishes nonetheless. Very interesting. I, I Maybe, you know what? It'd be, it might be a good idea to look more into Mode 7 and make a video on it, talk more about it. Yeah. It might have been the, oh, it was the 3D FX chip that I'm thinking of, actually. The Mode 7 is something else. I don't know much about that. I don't, I don't know too much about SNES hardware, but I know there was the three. I just feel like the Mode 7 thing is... What they did with for, like, Mario Kart, NF0, and then you look at what they did with Star Fox. I think, that I think I believe those are two separate things. I don't know. Uh, I'm pretty sure that I, I, I want to say yes, though. So... Yeah. So, Science Show just added me. Which SNES games would you want the most if they come to online? Uh, Earthbound? Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger. That, that's it. Pretty much. Those two. Yeah, I, I honestly don't have too much interest in playing any SNES, SNES games. I didn't grow up with them. I don't... I, I don't have nostalgia for them at all. Also Donkey Kong Country games. Yes. Yep. Guys, we didn't get all of them. I think we only got two of them. Uh, uh, two on the SNES class. And just for the record, the reason why I didn't bring up other games is because I've beaten most of them already. Like, I've beaten Mario World, Link to the Past, and Super Metroid. Right? If I hadn't, I'd I want those. I have not beaten Link to the Past. You should. It's good. I have played a little bit of Super Metroid. I have... You should beat that one, too. It's really good. Actually, I don't particularly enjoy Link to the Past, to be honest. As a Super Metroid, you fan, should play through. You should play through Super, Super Metroid. Metroid yeah. I played a little bit of it, a couple hours, and I loved it. Um, but I was emulating it, and the emulator was being annoying. So I, I was like, I'm just gonna wait until I can play like an actual official version of the game. I got you. So Brandon Stallion added me. Hey Andres, what if in September they don't only reveal SNES games, but also Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games? Oh. In which case, if they release. The Oracle games, then I will play them. Oh right man, the or I haven't That's played. That's what I want. I haven't played them. Like I, I mean, I've played I them, mean, but I just mean like I, I've, played like, I have I've never owned a game, owned them, and been able to play through them and beat them. That would be really cool to have, actually. So that would Minish, get me really hyped, actually. I'd be, I, I don't I'd, care yeah. as much about Minish Cap because I have Yeesh. that game and I've one hundred percented it. Well, I don't care about them adding it to the service because I gotcha. own the game. Gotcha. So the same reason why it. I didn't bring right. up Super Metroid. Okay. Yeah, I I can play that game, and plus I've one hundred percented it, so I I don't. I, I could go back and enjoy it, but I've played the whole... I've, I've played everything there is to play. So. I want the Mario Tennis game. Oh, and also that Pokemon trading card game. These are Game Boy games. Game Boy Color games. Yeah. I didn't I have a Game them. Boy either. Um, my brother had one. Mm. 
but I didn't, I didn't have one. I played a few Game Boy games. Actually, I only played. I think the only one I played on my DS Lite was Minish Cap. I still own it. And the DS Lite, and it works. Both of them. So. All right. Cool. So, um, I, I think uh, we both seem to agree that it's more likely Super Nintendo games come out, outside of an Nintendo Direct, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe I should just save this topic for later, because, yeah, I'll save it for later, but basically, you know, I think Nintendo Direct's happening late September, early October. Um, because, yeah. it, one, because I think SNES games aren't needed for it, right? It could come earlier, but also with the Smash DLC, with Banjo, that seems to sort of... There's a couple that I'll, I'll, I'll save that discussion more for later, but basically, right. it from what we know, it seems like a likely late September release for Banjo, and I think that's going to come right before a Direct, but uh, I'll save that topic for later. I made it for the end, so it's going to be for the end. So let's move on to the next topic, uh, and that is about town. So Game Freak has filed a new trademark for Little Town Hero. Right, we haven't heard about town since last year, since last September actually. They've been completely quiet about it, and we know nothing of it. So um, either A, they're gonna talk about it in this in town direct whenever it happens, right? I don't know when it's happening, but sometime in the fall, and they announce a release date for it really soon, or it's getting delayed. Uh, but I think it's, and the trademark Little Town Hero, most people agree that is the new name for this town game. Because when they showed off town, that was a pending title. Yeah, um, personally, I think it is getting delayed. I don't think they're going to want it to come out just a month after Pokemon. That seems weird. Um, especially, it's like Game Freak's such a small studio to release two major games one month after another would be really weird um, for a studio like that. Like, Nintendo, of course, they can do that. They so, down so many studios, I'll say like, this. That would be um, weird for that studio to do Right. Such. I don't like the idea of them delaying the game, but it seems like that's already happened, right? They should have talked about it already. They should have. Yeah, they haven't it, mentioned it in the long No. Uh, and because of the controversy surrounding Sword and Shield, a lot of people are making these assumptions that Game Freak is not trying hard, that they're not putting that much energy into this, they don't have a low budget, that they're focusing too much efforts on other stuff. None of this is founded right um this is just a belief of a lot of people uh what bothers me is that there's some youtubers saying claiming this as, as proof and there's no proof uh but, but whatever that's besides the point um i think if town is to be officially delayed till 2020 that would go at least some ways towards tiding over some of the anger towards the changes in sword and shield because a lot of people are accusing Game Freak of not focusing on Pokemon and focusing on other efforts such as Town. So if they delay Town till next year, right, I think that could quell some of the upset people over Sword and Shield. A little, like a tiny bit. Not a lot, but like a tiny bit. Yeah, I, I know what you mean, because a lot of people are saying they're focusing more on it. And it's, it's due to a quote that they had that their A team was working on town while their B team was working on Pokemon Sword and Shield. Wait, what? Is that, a, yeah, is that an official quote? Yeah, it was an official quote. They, what? They, had, they have two teams. They have their A team and their B team. Well, is the B team the main town. team and the A team not the main team? Not necessarily. Um, their A team is, I think slightly bigger but it's it, i think their b team is actually the one that has like i, I, I gotta most pull it i gotta find this people. quote man i pull this quote yeah. go, go find the quote um a team from the way i b understand team. i don't know if they actually use the words a team and B okay because i feel like that 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 that, that, that. it was like team one team two team a team b something to that extent i need a link to this but that was that was the big quote from what I, what I remember. I want I, I don't want to go to a YouTube video. I want proof. I need the facts. I need facts. Wait them now. Where are they? Where are the facts? Um. If you just look up like Pokemon Team Pokemon. I don't want this video to play. You might hear some noise. So I just want to see if he has a source. Of course he doesn't. Oh, okay, I found a direct quote, I think. Oh, hold on. Okay, look, also there's an article. 
An article that uh, from a website I've never heard of. Interesting. Pokemon developer Game Freak is increasingly prioritizing original game creation in order to grow the experience of its staff. I mean, that that's fine, right? I want a quote. There are two different production teams here, simply named Production Team 1 and Production Team 2. I want to explain Team 1 is fully dedicated to Gear Project, while Team 2 is for the Pokemon operation. What that means is that Game Freak as a company is prioritizing Gear Project, which is it? Interesting. Hmm. I don't like that's, this website. That's the quote that people don't like. You said you found an article on it? I did, but it's... Oh, I'm trying to figure out if they have a link to Because I, I don't... I don't... I don't like that site that I saw. It just doesn't seem very... Credible. I just want... I want to break it down word for word. Because, I mean, based off, I I, can, I could see why some people would be concerned. But, I mean, like, they've been working on Sword and Shield for years, right? Um, and they've had other teams, like, like for example, like, they, like, Ultra Sun and Moon was made by their amateurish team, right? Mm -hmm. uh, while they focus on something else. And that they do that to build experience. Right, I, I'm sorry. I'm you got reading. nothing. I'm still reading the. All right, so I have the direct quotes here. Can you link it me? Read them out. Um, you want me to give you the link? Yeah, just send it me on Twitter. Okay. There you go. So you can scroll down just a tiny bit, and then they have the direct quote from the That's, interview. I think it's the same article I was looking at. Is it? This is the people I've... who interviewed them. Yeah, I don't like this website. <laughs> I've never heard of this website ever. Video games, yeah, I've never heard of it either. Never heard of this they, website. They said they they got an interview. All right, well. Somehow this site we've never heard of got an interview, but they did. So. Yeah. All right. Apparently, team team one t makes like a new life. What I understand. Can the experience team one gains working on different genres and platforms benefit team two? There's a lot of back and forth with team one and two on one of the interesting things that team two, which is dedicated to Pokemon, only knows about specific platforms. So with team two engine Yeah, I mean, okay, so right there they're just saying that team Team Two has always worked on Pokemon. Yeah. So alright, then team one nah, works no. on like Giga Wrecker, Hormone. Alright, so Hawk, that's Hard the Jog. thing though. So right here he says, right? Tempo the badass elephant. They're not the people who make Pokemon. Essentially, the people making town aren't the people who make Pokemon, is what he's trying to say. Right. Well, here they're saying one of the interesting things is that Team 2, which is dedicated to Pokemon, this only knows about specific platforms. Meaning that they've only, they only, they're the ones that only work on the Nintendo platforms, the specific platforms that are dedicated to Team 2. So I think that's, that's the issue is that when they see Team 1, Team 2, the implication is that Team 1 is their main team that they've used to make Pokemon games in the past. Mm -hmm. Here it's saying that Team 2 is a team that's always worked in the Pokemon games. So it's not like they have... Right. It's not like the, 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 their main team that's always worked on Pokemon games has abandoned Sword and Shield and is working on right. something else. That was the story and narrative going around that the main team was not working on it. That's not the case. If you read the actual quote, that is not what they're saying. So, mm -hmm. all right, that's what I want to check. Um, yeah. And but, so none of the people who typically make Pokemon are working on Town, apparently. It's just Team 1. Right. The numbering is just misleading, and I think the clickbaity titles are misleading and people interpreting it are misleading if you read it it says that the, the team two is still the team that works on is that that's not this hasn't changed pokemon the pokemon team is still the pokemon team working on pokemon um that said you know i i think um it is interesting though because they have this other team working on town and the work their efforts in town right like Brand, I thought you made a great point before we saw Sword and Shield get revealed, right? If you look at town, like, I'll just put up, I'll put this over here. Just like, you know, it's one image, right? Like, it would give us an idea of how Sword and Shield will look. And I feel like it's, it's fairly close to how um, Sword and Shield looks, in my opinion. Yeah. It, it looks similar. Like, if you look at the wild area, I think it's similar. Yeah. Um, the wild area is more detailed, though, than I think town is. 
There's more go. There, it's a wider expanse with more in the background. Mm -hmm. But this is like more more of a closer thing. But you know, it, it looks good. I am curious how town's gonna turn out. Um, but maybe we'll find out in an Nintendo Direct later this season. Maybe. 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 Exactly. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, what was I going to say? All right, so we've established that the Pokemon team is the Pokemon team, right? And that Game Freak has another team that works on a new project, such as Town, right? I remember there was, like, that Elephant Indie game that came out years ago as well. Yeah. Like, the Game Freak does work on other games, mm -hmm. so. That, that one was even multi-platform. Right, it was on other Tempo, systems. Tempo, the badass elephant, I just on... It was on. I don't even think it came to a Nintendo platform. Actually, I think it skipped the Wii U at the time. Right. So I mean, to answer Sabbath's question, no, a Town is not the first game game from Game Freak that is not a Pokemon game. They they've done them. They just mm -hmm. now that's not what they're known for. Yeah. There, there's a couple on listed on the site, and like Har Harmo Knight, Pocket Card Jockey, Tembo the Badass Elephant, Giga Wrecker. There's a couple that they this team has done. Mhm. Mm so I. Uh... I'm looking forward to seeing more on town. I we don't know yeah. much about it, right? We, we don't. We know barely anything. We've but seen it, the one trailer. It showed what like a minute of game. Right, but at least that we got the update that of the name, right? Little Town mm -hmm. Hero. It seems that suggests I'm sort of that surprised it's that along. they actually changed the name because there's been a couple of uh, Nintendo games where the name wasn't final and then just ended up being the final name anyways. Right. I I, I could I could kind of I kind of like town because it's simpler. But yeah. Little Town Hero, I think, is a lot more indicative of what the game is. From what I remember, that we were told this is basically it's a game that takes place in a in a town. Like the entire game is in the town. Like that is right. the game. It's just the one town. Right. So I'm assuming that from what we've seen from the trailer, it sounds basically like evil thing has come to the town. You have to defend the town. Mm -hmm. I don't know anymore. That's just kind of what I sort of interpret from what we've seen. So it could be fun. Um, it, it it to me it still seems smaller scale. Uh, yeah, you know, I definitely think it's focused the, on the a way town. they showed it. Yeah, right. They they indicated that it was going to be a smaller scale game. Mm -hmm. So we'll see about what, what what's going on with that. But let's move on to talking about the indie show. And I'll be real with you. Like everyone, like like a shifty sh messaged me earlier, like asking me if I was going to stream uh, the the indie world show, and I was just like, no. Mainly just because, like, yeah. I'm going to watch it, and I know that I'm not... My reaction to it isn't going to be, like, oh, my... Like, really worth watching. It's like, oh, okay, that's nice. My reactions would have been so boring. Neat. Oh. Oh, neat. Oh. oh that looks cool. Eh. Oh. Neat. Oh. Eh. Oh, neat. Like, that That. That. That was pretty... Yeah. That would have been it. So, you know, um... I don't really... Um... I didn't feel the need to stream it, but or record my reaction for the record. Uh, I I uh, there was a few games that I liked. One, I mean, we've known about Ori. That's kind of a known quantity, but that it's coming to the Switch. Right, the confirmation of the rumors. That's very exciting to me. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But the other thing, the other game that really stood out to me was um, Tourist or Tourist. Yeah. Because has a Y in it, but I'm just gonna call right, it Tourist. Right. Tourist pronounced Tourist. Okay. Tourist. That game looks great, and that's made by Shinnin. Shinnin has made, has made um, like Fast Arm X. Um, they, they make they made a lot of like they they started making like games for Nintendo. At least once I started noticing on the WiiWare titles, they were some of the better looking WiiWare titles, and they've made some good ones on the Wii U. They and all, more recently, you know, they made Fast Racing Neo on the Switch as a as a right. launch title. This game looks very different. But it's also like one of the best looking game. I think it probably is the best looking game from the show. Right. Save for it, maybe Ori. I love its art style. It's got like a 3D pixel art style, but it has like really advanced like lighting, which looks good. I always love it's kind of like Octopath Travel in that way, but obviously a different take on that sort of mixing old retro aesthetic with like really new advanced lighting effects and it just looks absolutely beautiful actually they've done a similar thing with minecraft recently with ray tracing which mm. looks absolutely it, it makes minecraft actually look good like it it, it looks really stunning so it's, it's a similar you're talking about that minecraft adventure game 
Uh, the top-down one that they're yeah. The switch. Yeah, that's coming out. Is that, coming Is that the one you're talking about with the ray tracing? You're talking about something else? No, I'm talking about an actual, like, version mod? of Minecraft. It's not necessarily a... It's sort of a mod, but it's also... Is it an official mod? <laughs> it's an official mod, essentially. Okay. Like, NVIDIA and Mojang are working on this. Okay. I'll look but into it. But it's not, like, a new release. But it's it's the regular version of Minecraft with ray tracing graphics. It looks stunning. It gotcha. has a similar appeal to Taurus, which is why I brought it up. Wow. So, yeah. Um, I just said wow because I didn't expect there would be 20 people watching. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Thank yeah. you guys for watching. We appreciate it. Yeah, for real. Uh, the other game that I thought looked really good was Eastward, which was the game where they were just... It was, it was two people. I, I need to go back and watch it more closely because I only, I only saw it the one time. But it had a really unique art style. And essentially, it was they were on a journey, I guess, eastward. They didn't really talk too much about the story, but mm. it was just I had a remember. nice art style. It was it was cool. So those are the, the two that I think tourist and east. The tourist one, they, like it looks like you're actually like doing some dungeon crawling, man. Yeah, it looked like you you had to go like explore and find different dungeons and things. Right, it, it um, kind of had a Zelda esque vibe to me, which was really exciting. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, it, so it, it did. And that Zelda's my jam, man. Like, I mean, it, oh, Zelda yeah. is my favorite gaming franchise because Same. it is my religion. <laughs> Not actually. All hail um, the mighty Triforce. I, 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 I follow the, the the holy goddess, right? She is my savior. I will fight for her, die for her. But joking aside, uh, there was another game actually that stood out to me, and that was Europa. Yes. Yeah. That game actually looked cool. It's like a puzzly platformer, right? Um, mm -hmm. But like you can, you know, you you move loop move and loop around, and the graphics look really good too. Right. Uh, that that was very, it looks good to me. Uh, that is pretty. I'm I'm pretty into that. Uh, so those are. I mean, that's pretty much it. Like I I did notice in the trailer. Like, at first, I thought it was just gonna be kind of like just walking around trying to navigate, but I saw they do mm -hmm. increasingly add more and more mechanics to it. So that is really interesting to me. So it does look like it's going to be more in depth. So I'm definitely paying more attention to that one. Mm -hmm. uh, another one that I thought, I thought the trailer for it was trash the way they presented it, but I've seen the game on PC and it's really cool. And that was, I believe it's called Risk of Rain 2, which is essentially a game where you're dropped onto a never ending you just play and you get upgrades and then when you die you can like carry certain things over and unlock certain things to bring with you next time um was that that but, loot thing where yeah, the, where the pods loot, are coming down yeah i thought the trailer for it was, was bad trash. okay was yeah bad. yeah i didn't it, it, that... did, it didn't represent the game at all i don't know why they didn't just show gameplay no it was, it was the most dumb. retarded trailer i didn't like it um but the actual game if you go in and watch people play it, it's super super cool you can play up to four people online and it's it's just really cool you just kind of run around you shoot enemies you get money so you can buy different equipment that's lying around and you can do different things like you can challenge certain things if you want to make the game like way harder but you also get certain loot and essentially the way the game works is you have to get through level by level by level but it never ends so you can just keep going on and on and on and the difficulty increases over time not by level interesting so if you take a long time in the beginning level you might screw yourself over for how long you can go if you end up having trouble because okay. you, essentially you want to get as powerful as you can as quickly as possible so you don't get overwhelmed and you can just get a bunch of different things that are super helpful and it's super awesome I, it's a hard game to describe but essentially it's just a top it's not even a top-down shooter it's actually like full 3d um shooting game and you can play it. it's online co-op it's really cool Hmm. But you, you'd have to watch uh, like a but, gameplay. The, but that's that's the thing. Understand. That's the thing. I don't like it when I see a trailer for something and it doesn't show me gameplay. I don't understand. Mm -hmm. It's a freaking game. I want to know about the game. Right. Especially for an indie game. What kind of indie game shows you a CGI trailer? I have no idea. It's so weird. It is very weird. It's a random thing. I keep on having to like say wait an hour to restart my computer like right before the podcast i was like oh we're gonna restart it like no no don't no oh. and I, I don't know how to stop it 
So he keeps on right. prompting me every like 45 usually minutes. Usually it will tell you, usually when I get an update, it says, when do you want it to update? Like it adds- I clicked that and it didn't come up and I had to start the podcast. So, oh well, don't worry. We'll, we're fine. It, I can just delay it until we're, until we're done here. But um, I see a computer robot's added us. He said a boring reaction would be something rather than nothing. I, I just, also it was really early. Yes, it was it, really early. It was really okay, early. I'm gonna be real with you guys. I'm gonna be really real. All right, you guys ready? I was binge watching Umbrella Academy last night. I finished it, and I had left my phone YouTube app open on the stream, and then I started hearing the intro. I was like, oh, okay, I need to sleep. Meaning, I watched Umbrella Academy all through until the day. Granted, my sleep cycle is like really warped right now. Like I'm basically like yeah. working at night. Um, I am. I've been working at night. So like for me, so like I'm probably gonna go work after this in a few hours. So I'm, I'm on a vampire ship. I need to. I need to switch it. I need to change. I, I want to live during the day. It's rare I see yeah. sunlight. <laughs> um, but yeah. So I, I didn't. I mean, I could have reacted to it if I really wanted to, but I just I never thought that I was going to. Just I just. I never do it for indie showcases. I just don't think. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I was. You go. I was going to do it, but then I was. It was increasingly getting closer and closer, and I hadn't said anything about it, and I didn't actually know what it was until like last night, and there was not really a good way for me to even like tell people that I was doing it. Mm. So number one, it was like super early right it's just an indie direct right i'm gonna care about like one or two games right in the entire presentation that's it and three i didn't even have a really good way of telling people that i was even gonna be doing it so and four, i didn't think it was actually gonna be fun to watch so. now it's not that i don't like My indie reactions. games right i do like indie games um now do i play more indie games i do like traditional triple a i don't really know um i mean let me think I, about it like i'm playing games. fire emblem right now Mario Maker. I play Fortnite. What else do I play? I occasionally play Smash. That's what I'm playing right now. Like those are like the I know I'm playing play, playing Mario Kart lately. None of those games are indie games, right? But if I go back a few months ago, I was playing Stardew Valley, right? I love the heck out of Shovel Knight, for example. Celeste. When Celeste came out, Celeste I was good. all over Celeste. Like I loved Celeste, right? And now I'm planning on getting into Hollow Knight sooner or later so it's not like i don't play indie games i do mm -hmm. but i don't play indie games as much as main main con like you know the bigger games i guess right. uh so that's something to take into consideration i suppose now i but the the thing is it's not, like i said i thought that i can't be excited for indie games but when we go into an indie showcase right most indie games are originals they're not like based off something that I already know about prior. So for example, right, we're next year, next E3, next E3, I'm gonna be incredibly excited because I'm gonna be hopeful of seeing sequels to things that I already know about, right? I'm gonna be excited to see the sequel to Breath of the Wild, maybe see the sequel to Mario Odyssey, maybe see that Mother 3 remake that we're hoping exists, but maybe not, right? Like, or see a new F-Zero, right? I'm not gonna necessarily be like thinking, oh man, I can't wait for that undisclosed game that I have no idea it exists. I won't be excited for it until I know about it, if that makes any sense. So my, my point simply being is that with indie, with a lot of the indie showcases, oftentimes they, not, they aren't sequels, and there's, so there's no prior history where I have this expectation of a sequel to something I already know and love. If that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. No? I think no, my, major, no. my major issue with indie presentations is that I usually... They're not shown off too well. Or they're not shown off in a way that I get enough information to be excited about them. Um, like, I'm interested in Taurus and you know, I think it's called Eastward. Right. But I've seen literally a minute of gameplay with no actual like in-depth explanation of what I was seeing or how the game actually plays. You know, it was an indie game that I was really excited for at first, but once I heard a lot of people talk about it, no one wanted it. It was Morpheus Law. Mm. The game that had kind of like that that um, very like Mexican Aztec sort of yeah. like feel to it, and you get bigger as you shoot people. 
I thought the concept was really cool, but it took too long to come out with it, and by the time it came out, I did not hear good reviews. So I, I just didn't pick it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Morphe's Law did come out. It just, when it came out, it was kind of a train wreck. I didn't even know it had film. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty Switch, sure. I knew it released no, on I, yeah. Steam. But I yeah. didn't know it released on Switch yet. Well, maybe I just maybe I'm remembering the name wrong. Maybe I'm I'm pretty sure I'm right. Let me no, just. No, I know you're you're right about the name. For sure. Am I? Yeah. More yeah. No, this thing came out, dude. I didn't know it released. I forgot about it lately. Release date August 20, 2018. Oh. Yep. Metacritic <laughs> forty eight percent. Marketing that. Oh. Yeah. So Ouch. there you go. Yeah. Yeah, it, it came out. Yeah, it came out like a year ago, literally. Literally a year. Holy crap! Literally a year ago. A year uh, today. Oh uh, well, according apparently uh, on Switch it came out the nineteenth of twenty eighteen. Today is August nineteenth, twenty nineteen. So. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Didn't even know that happened. Yeah, it 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 happened. So, yep. Oh well, but let's talk. Let's. I'm gonna, I'm gonna segue now, guys. So, the other game that excited me was um, Ori, right? One, because I think it's a cool game. I might get it for Switch. But as I talked about earlier in the podcast, Brandon, I believe you agree, it kind of validates previous rumors, right? It, it further validates, we should say, because we already got Cuphead. That was part of the rumor. Then we get, now we're getting Ori. And now those two are always the most likely, but they are also paired with other rumors that talked about maybe Gears maybe master chief collection maybe rare replay now based off those rumors it seemed more like those were in the discussions but it wasn't quite certain which one of those games would actually come but this is where things get even more interesting it's because now we had further further validation of this nintendo microsoft relationship and we are getting the banjo and the kazooie in super smash brothers ultimate but on top of that we have seen a listing suggesting a Banjo-Kazooie game coming to Switch. Now, we don't know much about that listing. I think it's even disappeared by this point, but the implication being that some sort of Banjo game could be coming to Switch, which makes sense to me, right? Especially considering the trend we're seeing with the Fighters Pass characters. We got Persona 5 Scramble with the Joker. We're getting Dragon Quest XI S, the heroes coming. So if that pattern is to be followed, I think a Banjo game is coming. Not to mention, twice, I said that twice, whatever. The before we knew about the actual characters, we were told that Nintendo selected the characters, implying that it was more of kind of like a, some sort of business e centric decision. And as we've seen, a lot of these games are sort of lining up with third-party games coming out on the Switch and as well, right? But they're also like, I mean, Joker is not really was not really a big character on Nintendo systems beforehand, right? Yeah, but he, he is a big character from a very popular series So he's bringing a lot more attention to Smash Brothers and with the hero and Dragon Quest as well Although it's more from the eastern side of things, but with Banjo, I mean that's controlling the internet, right? Like that it's a really big deal. So Anyway point is all of this is sort of connecting together and I, I just think that seeing Ori just further Further, my hopes that we will be seeing maybe Master Chief Collection or Rare Replay come to the Switch in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they're both likely. Um, Master Chief Collection is also already getting ported to the PC, so they're they're working on that game even more. So that that could they could be working on a, a Switch version at the same time, I think. And Rare Replay makes a lot of sense. Now, you said there was a specifically a Banjo listing, though? I never heard about that. Yeah, there was. It was a while ago, though. I'll see if I can pull it up. <sighs> but that, that, that doesn't imply a Rare Replay, though. That no, it doesn't. A, a separate Banjo game. And if they did that instead of a Rare Replay or on top of Rare Replay, I would love to see a remake. Yeah, here on Nintendo Game Life. Original. All right. Banjo Kazooie Switch listing appears on Amazon Germany, but we couldn't count on it. Ugh. There you go. Um, oh, I don't. I, I don't know if that's the that's the one that I was referring to, but that's one example of it at least. Okay. I would really like to see a remake of the original Banjo. Dude, if they had a remake, that'd be insane. I'm not expecting that. I'm honestly just expecting kind of like a Turok situation where it's like a, a slightly enhanced 
remastered, remastered, not not remake. Yes. Completely different. Remaster is basically like really minor enhancements, maybe a couple quality of life changes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they might add a little bit more content, but that's right. And I mean, <laughs> and... for games in N64 era, as we've seen with Turok, like Turok on the Switch, Turok One and Two looks so much better than it did oh man before. i haven't played Turok 2 like, yet but Turok so 1 is better. amazing on the switch so mm -hmm. good it looks great it flows well uh it's mm -hmm. fun i played with motion aiming it felt great man uh the yeah. rumbling the it just it was fun it was fun to play so, i enjoyed I, I it i think a remaster too um i but if we got the rare replay that's essentially a remaster right because it's already like kind game. of like scaled into hd or something right yeah, yeah. It, it's being rendered at 1080p i think the it's in 16 by 9 you know it's it's not in 4 by 3 anymore well, it, like, it's essentially well like uh, one thing not I would... as much as what they did with torok because torok changed some like of controls the assets. um all that too they they like had like a texture update uh but with um banjo I would love it. I don't know if they did it in a rare replay, but like I would love it if the right analog stick actually controlled it like a normal camera. Hmm. I don't know if that's the case in rare replay or not. I don't know how the camera works. Either way, that's what I would want, right? Mm -hmm. So I would like to see that. That'd be awesome. But the fact that that already, you know, the fact that they've already essentially remastered it for the Xbox 360 edition and the rare, what that's what's in rare replay. I would like to see them actually remake the game. So, the thing is, is that, like, remaking the game would be great, but if, imagine if we got a customized Rare Replay for Switch, which basically just brought over a lot, all the... I mean, honestly, I want some of the Rare games that were on, on Xbox 360. Like, would have been, it would be nice to see, um, I believe, Cameo, um, or Cameo, I forget how it's pronounced, and um, Via Pinata. Uh, those would be cool to see come to Switch uh, in the Rare Replay, right? Because I feel like they wouldn't bring every single game. Also, per the, per the Perfect Dark that came out on 360 as well. It'd be nice to see. But obviously, I would want them to focus on games that actually appeared on Nintendo systems, such as Jet Force right. Gemini, Killer Instinct, um, Conqueror's Bad Fur Day, Banjo Kazooie Tooie, obviously. Those I would really love to see. And actually, just random fun fact, Cameo was originally being developed for the GameCube. Right, that eventually came out on 360 instead. Interesting. Yeah. It may have even been originally like in mind with the N64. I'm not certain about that, but they definitely had, there was definitely visible footage. There is visible footage out there on the internet of Cameo running on the Nintendo GameCube before it came out on the Xbox 360. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. no, it's, it's really cool. It's like, oh, what could have been? But it never happened. So I would love to see Rare Replay come with some of those 360 games um, right. to Switch as well. Yeah. I think Rare Replay is probably what they would do because it's less work. Oh, I but hope I it would... is because that would be more games. Mm -hmm. I be honestly more games. would prefer a remake of Banjo to a Rare Replay. You know, I've, I've been hoping that they have some sort of crazy relationship with Nintendo and Microsoft and they have a baby. And the baby is Banjo Kazooie in the Mario Odyssey engine. Yeah. That'd be amazing. I I mean and I've talked about it before how Banjo Kazooie is a lot like more is almost more like Mario Odyssey than Mario 64 is. Mm -hmm. So I, I think there's a fit there. That is not at all what I'm expecting. I'm expecting no. Banjo Kazooie. That's it. That's what I'm expecting. Like a Banjo Kazooie just the the original N64 game just Maybe like the 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 version that was on Rare Replay. Just take that one game from Rare Replay, put it on the Switch for like ten bucks. I'd hope we at least get Banjo Tooie as well. If if it's both, then it'd be great. I could see I it be hope... like they release Banjo Kazooie first, and then a few months later bring out Banjo Tooie. Mm -hmm. Kind of like what they would with Two Rock One and Two. Be so disappointing. It would be very disappointing. Well. Yes. Yeah, there's just there's no well about this. It's just it's hey, I'm no, no, I'm gonna be happy to see Banjo on the Switch regardless. Uh, right. Do I want more? I always I'd want pick more. It up. I'd pick I always it up. want more. Especially if um, they put Banjo Two because I've never played that one. But I'm gonna give you something here. This might excite you a little bit. So I have an article. Right, it's actually more closely related to the exact topic we're talking about because I haven't technically 
specified the topic yet. If you, if you read it, I don't know if you are on the actual podcast, you can see the topic, but I'm first trying to pull up the article I have. There it is. Found it. So, Conquer Creator believes classic Rare RP could return to Nintendo platforms. So, the Conquer Creator, Chris Saver, believes it's only a matter of time before Rare IP arrives on the Nintendo Switch. I'll read his quote. It is significant, very significant, but it was also inevitable. He said of the possibility of classic Rare IP could return to Nintendo platforms. You only need to have to look at the reaction to Banjo's appearance in Smash to see that this is purely a fan-driven thing. Whether they'll be as loud as, uh, as about other IP, including Conquer, is up for debate. I'd say it's not likely. So he, you know, he's talking about, from his perspective, right, that he could see sees rare IP coming to the Switch, or Nintendo at least, right? And that's really exciting. Now, he also goes on to say that Conquer is not as likely as Banjo, which I fully agree with. I don't think anyone will really disagree with that, right? We want Conquer, of course. That my dog wants it too. But, um,. I really, I want a better microphone so that stuff is just not heard anymore. Uh, yeah. But, um, I think it's happening, man. I, I, I think uh, there will be Rare IP coming to Switch. Obviously, we're, I mean, we're talking about Banjo coming to Switch, right? So at least that. But he just said IP. He doesn't necessarily indicate if it's just a port, remake, new game. But here's the thing. Like, just let's say we just get a Banjo-Kazooie game announced in the next Nintendo Direct, right? And that's it. Like, it's just that one game just pulled from Rare Replay, and that's what we get. That's it. Mm-hmm. For, like, $9.99. I would be okay with that. But just because we get that, that doesn't mean we can't get anything else in the future. If Banjo-Kazooie does well with Smash Brothers, if the Banjo-Kazooie game on the eShop does well, that only further improves the relationship between Nintendo and Microsoft. And if that does well, hey, we made money on this. Why don't we do something else that will make us more money? It only makes sense from a business perspective to continue to move forward in that direction if it does well. So a dis- seeing Banjo in Smash, I think, is kind of like a situation where it could open up the doors for even bigger and greater things in terms of Nintendo and Microsoft and Rare working together. Right? I mean, we are seeing more and more. Obviously, we got Cuphead. Now we have Ori. We got the Banjo announcement at E3, which was arguably the second best... Man, it's close. Like, what was bigger for you? The Badger reveal or Zelda? Oh, Zelda. Zelda all the way. What's yes, that? but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay, look, like, yes, but also, we kind of we kind of knew the Badger thing was happening, right? Like, you and me, we kind of knew, right, because of our research and all this other stuff, but what it suggests, right, bringing Banjo back, Banjo not being on Nintendo, but relationship between Nintendo and Microsoft, the lack of Minecraft Steve, which you and I were not a fan of, right? Like, right. that all was really big, right? It says it like it says a lot of different things, right? Zelda, well, we knew that was an eventuality anyway, right? You understand what I'm trying to say? Like, yes, Zelda right. is, oh my god, it's Zelda, the best game series ever, mm-hmm. right? But Banjo, but it was... We knew that was eventually going to come. We just didn't think we'd see it so soon. The banjo thing was, oh my god, please happen. If it doesn't happen, this is not gonna happen. Like, you know? Um, but it happened, and it, it's a different kind of excitement, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, I, I, they're, both, they're both big deals. They're both really, really big deals. Just in slightly different ways. But I was screaming my heart out oh, yeah. during E3 for both oh, of yeah. them. My voice hurt so much after that, dude. I was... Mm-hmm. And people were asking me later in that day, like, hey. Like, they were, like, talking to my, my room. It's like, hey, is, it, is, is he okay? It's like, oh, no, yeah, today's E3. He's fine. I, I, I went on a stream for six more hours after that. I yeah. Think it was. Um, yeah. By the end, my voice, I was, like, starting to have to talk like stop talking because i just like my voice was hurting so bad like my throat was just it was dead We're yeah like, dude why do you why do you why are you quiet all of a sudden like because i've been talking non-stop you, for eight hours that might have been that was definitely one of the best e3s right at least in terms of that presentation it was a very mm-hmm. strong presentation oh yeah i it was the pacing was incredible very it was it was one of the best it was one of the best 
done directs, right? Like you could debate if the content wasn't as good as say, for example, 2017, but in terms of the way the direct was done, it was arguably the best direct. Because one, they they started strong with Smash, right? And they had a, a multitude of great games all throughout the show. It was all very fast paced, right? We were never like, oh my God, this is slow. The only time they spent like more than three minutes on a game was Luigi's Mansion 3. And we all wanted to see that. We were like, oh my God, oh wow, this looks really good. Like the whole time. Right. And then besides that, everything was very fast. And then they're like, okay, here is one more crazy thing for you. Then the banjo thing kind of blew, it blew our minds, right? But then they're like, oh, no, we lied. Here's even one more thing. And then they blew our minds even more. Yeah. So it was, it was pretty intense. Um, the double whammy of Banjo and Zelda. Yeah, it was, it was nuts. It was, insane. It was crazy. But I, I want to go, go back to the, the topic here. So based off everything that I've presented, Brandon, right, between um, the Conquer creator talking about IP coming, right, the listing we've seen, the the relationship between Nintendo and Microsoft, obviously Banjo coming to Smash Brothers, the sense it would make the rumors or revalidating those rumors of Microsoft games coming to Switch, right, and I'll, some of those rumors included Rare Replay. Do you think... We will see where IP come to Switch. Yes, for sure, 100%. At the very least, we're gonna get Banjo. I do think where Replay will come. Um, I'm not sure if every single game will come, at least at first. Um, but I, I'm assuming most of those games are gonna make their way to a Nintendo version of the Rare Replay. I. I would be very upset if Banjo released by itself for ten dollars, just because Rare Replay sixty and it has like way more games and it's the same version as that's in that version. I feel very um, confident in saying that if Rare, Rare Replay does come to Switch, it's not going to be the same Rare Replay that's on Xbox. I would hope also. Like it could even include older... Donkey Kong sixty four, for example. Right. That's what I was gonna say. I was hoping that they would include Donkey Kong sixty four. Or the Donkey Kong Country games, but I mean. Um, those aren't necessarily That's... needed if Super Nintendo games come to Switch. But, yeah. you know, if they don't come, and it if, makes sense. What if, by some miracle, we got Goldmine 64? Imagine. Imagine oh, wow. How awesome that oh, would wow. Be. Yeah. Who handled the GoldenEye remake? I don't know. I don't. I Gold, don't... Golden, I don't really know too much about GoldenEye. What, what the problem is with GoldenEye? Who owns. There's like too many. People. I mean, it's a whole licensing nightmare. Um, yeah. But I just want to see who developed it. Did Rare have a hand in it at all? I guess no. I no, I said we. Think no, they did. No, that the twenty. I want to care about the twenty ten game. Apparently, Eurocom and Endspace. All right. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, composers, publishers, Activision published it. Oh well, that's not important. Yeah, but Golden Eye Season Four coming would be, would be. Great. That would be really cool to see. Absolutely, uh, I would I'm, love to see that. I think Conquer could make it into the Nintendo Switch version, honestly, even if he is probably the one that. I don't know. Do you I'm think? Kind of do just... you think it, it's dialogue and violence now would be considered more of a teen rather than mature rating? I, I have not played the game myself, so I don't... It, it's, it has a lot of sexual themes and stuff. But then then again, Nintendo's been very lenient with M-rated content on their system. They haven't shunned away from... I mean, they, they basically have porn on the eShop. For real. Like, they yeah. have not said no to anything, so I don't think they'd be like, oh, we're not going to allow Conquer to be in real Well, it, the pro it's not so much that I don't think Nintendo would be... Okay it's more of an issue of um could it be packaged in rare replay because then the game might be, the whole package might be like oh this is rated m you know i think the xbox version actually you know how they could handle it though it could be kind of like an app rare replay could be treated as an app instead and you download i think it's kind of how it works on xbox where you just download specific games so when you download conquer it's like hey that, this is rated that's m. how it works on the game pass version Right, so maybe it's like a Game Pass version we get, right? So, you know, you could still get access to, to Conquer, but you only can have access to a couple of games at a time, right? And, you know, mm -hmm. depending on the parental controls, maybe you don't have access to it, 
I think that might be the right way to go about it. Not to mention, Rare Replay is probably a huge thing, right, in terms of data size, so it might make more sense to just have a, multi a, a couple of different games downloaded at once as opposed to the whole thing. Let me see how big it is. Yeah, it's a uh, home. Um, 50 gigabytes of hard drive space. That's huge. That is and huge. And then... So this is Rare Replay, a collection of 30 games from a developer Rare. will require 50 gigabytes of hard drive space to install every game. According to the collections listing on the Amazon website, the game requires a minimum of 11.26 gigabytes for your Xbox One's hard drive. So it's 11.26 on the Xbox minimum? Okay, so I actually got um. If you get all of them, then it's fifty. But none of them are compressed. Oh, you want to? Oh, yeah, I got a super chat yeah. from Jordan Dropout. I I want to check it out. So, thank you very much for the super chat, Jordan Dropout. Uh, he's asking, you think we ever get another sandbox Donkey Kong like sixty four or a real Banjo three? A man can dream, right? Certainly you can. We can. Yes. We're all men. We are all. Not all of us are men, but. There's a lot of people. We all can Everyone dream. Everyone in the world is a man. <laughs> I, I heard it here first. Yes, I think it can happen. Um, I would not expect it soon, though. But a point I wanted to make, I kind of, I already sort of talked about it, but like, just maybe, just to make myself really crystal clear here, right? Seeing Badger come to Smash Brothers, right? That opens doors, right? Seeing Ori and Cuphead. Microsoft publishing games on Nintendo that opens doors seeing this conquer creator talk about rare IP come to Nintendo that is suggestive of a future where maybe the idea of getting a banjo 3 is no longer crazy because it would make sense to have that kind of game come out on a Nintendo system so if Microsoft starts bringing their games over I mean they are right and actually if you look at Cuphead and you look at um, Ori, they are not just straight ripped ports. Like they are enhanced versions. They are arguably the definitive versions, right? With Cuphead, it, it is arguably the better version. Like, cause they they enhanced it, they modified it. Like they, they did things to the Cuphead on Switch to make it good. Like you know, not just a, a lesser version. And so you know, like Microsoft is doing things special to get their games over to Nintendo. They're not just like the EA or just the Activision, just kind of. Like, yeah, here you go. And it's like a, a gimped version. No, they're doing their... With well, the games that they are bringing so far, they're high-quality stuff. Now, granted, we're just kind of getting into games right now, but they're they're doing a really good job as a publisher yeah. on Nintendo. So there's a very interesting relationship building here. So I can see a future where full-scale new Rare IP games could be on Nintendo, and that would include Banjo 3. I, I believe that can happen. Um, and as for Donkey Kong 64, or a game like Donkey Kong 64, we haven't we haven't gotten a new Donkey Kong game on Switch yet. I think it should get one. Technically, and Nintendo could make a Donkey Kong 64 2 without Rare, I believe, right? They, they, I mean, they don't have to call it 64 2, it's just Donkey Kong. Right, they just could a, just call it... It's just a Donkey... Nintendo could make a 3D Donkey Kong game. There's, there, there's no licensing issues Microsoft at all. Donkey. Zero. None. Yeah, um, they, they have, completely own that. Right, and they have full access to all of the characters, including King K. Rool. Like, there's no <laughs> issues there. And they have the Odyssey engine, actually. And I've talked about this before for Donkey Kong 64. My perfect vision for a 3D Donkey Kong. Imagine, so an Odyssey-like engine, you know, an adapted engine for Mario Odyssey used to make a new 3D platforming Donkey Kong game, right? But think about Tarzan. Right. Think about being in a giant jungle environment and th that sl that swinging and sliding mechanics along the branches and flowing through the jungle. Imagine if they were to transition that kind of movement style into Donkey Kong as he platforms and races around a jungle, accomplishing Donkey yeah. Kong 64, Mario 64s kind of things. Obviously, in this modern era. So I think there's a possibility that in the future. I'm not going to say it's happening soon. But I do think eventually there needs to be a new Donkey Kong game. I think it's more likely to get another Donkey Kong Country game. But I, th I don't think it's impossible that a 3D Donkey Kong game could happen sooner or later. And they have they have the Odyssey engine, man. They should do more of that Odyssey engine. They they did, they did it's, that's a special engine right there. Yeah, I definitely think a 
the 3D Donkey Kong game could play very differently to Mario. Focus more on just pure like speed and power at the same time. So oh my like, God! Fly through ah. the jungle high speeds, but you're also like this super huge gorilla. Right. Right. So super powerful too. Right, right. And I mean, if you're going to have multiple Kongs playable, maybe Diddy Kong's more nimble and has more acrobatic elements, but Donkey Kong can slam it. You know, he's, he's like, he's, he can punch you to the moon. He can do that. He's, he's a beast. So I, 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 I there's some serious potential, I think. So I, I think oh, it's, yeah. the, the, the premise of it, I think is incredibly exciting. So I think it's possible. We'll see what happens. So um, uh, Terry uh, Silverton added me. I think that we will get either Rare Replay, a Banjo-Kazooie, and banjo 2 remake, a Banjo-Kazooie collection, or maybe the long-awaited Banjo-3. Something's coming. I'm not expecting Banjo-3 this soon, but as I've been saying, I feel like, you know, the doors are opening, right? Like, if, like, for example, um, when Pit was, came to Smash Brothers Brawl, that, that, that opened a door, right? What did we get? We got Kid Icarus Uprising. Now, admittedly, we did not see much more for Kid Icarus since then, but I still have hope that we'll eventually get another Kid Icarus game, right? right. So, but my point simply being, though, that a character in Smash Bros. did eventually lead to a whole new game for that series that was dead for decades. So, you know, I, I think um, with Banjo it'd be different because it is not necessarily Sakurai's baby. So Sakurai wanted to kind of handle the Kid Icarus thing. I think that it wouldn't be limited by that. So that kind of is a point in its favor. Not to mention, I mean, there's been a strong demand for a Banjo-Kazooie game for years, right? Oh, yeah. There wasn't necessarily a demand for a Kid Icarus game until Pit was announced for Smash Brothers. So oh, there's a lot of reasons I think that would suggest that, hey, a Banjo-Kazooie game makes war a new one makes way more sense than a kid icarus game right at least back then you know before they make kid icarus uprising granted i still want a, a new kid icarus game i think there's a lot of potential oh, yeah. there as well even just a like re like a port not necessarily a port but like a remake i guess of kid icarus uprising on the switch would be amazing i'll settle i'll settle for that That'd yeah i'll settle incredible um yeah uh, I think part of the problem is that Sakurai doesn't want to make another Kid Icarus game himself, right? Mm -hmm. And they were really limited by the 3DS hardware. Like, the vision he had for that game, and he did it on 3DS. I really wish he did it on, on the... I don't know. I mean, I, I liked how it looked on the 3DS, right? But, mm -hmm. like, when did it come out? Like, could it have been on the Wii? Actually, I remember there was an attempt... They did attempt to get a Kid Icarus game, get Kid Icarus game, I can't speak it, nope, it's not possible. They did attempt to get a Kid Icarus game on the Wii. I believe Factor 5, before they went under, had a hand in trying to develop a Kid Icarus game, but not everything materializes to reality, so. 2012. Okay, the, the reason I simply asked that was to kind of just think about the timeline of Kid Icarus games, where like, could, it, could they have just put that on the Wii, or would it have made more sense to have it on the Wii U, or not? And because it came out in 2012, I think that obviously suggested, hey, the Wii U is dead already, so there's no reason to bring it to that system. Right. And the Wii U was and not a proven not like thing. The Wii is no. that much more powerful than the 3DS. No, it's like not a it. power thing though. It's it's a can this game succeed thing, hmm. right? If the game comes out in 2012, first of all, the last main Nintendo game that came out on the Wii was 2011, and that was Skyward Sword. But throughout that entire year, there was nothing. Right, so the Wii, in my opinion, was dead since the holiday 2010, right? Minus for that one blip with Skyward Sword. Uh, so, I just, I'm just saying the timeline didn't make sense for the Kid Icarus game to come out on the Wii. Um, but there was a Kid Icarus game in development for the Wii at one point. It just never materialized. Uh, and then as for maybe they could have just had made it for Wii U instead. Problem with that is that the Wii U was a complete failure of a system, right? Yeah. So there, there's that little issue right there. Not to mention, by, I think the 3DS came out... When did it come out? 2010? I think it did. Yeah, 2010, 2011. No, I think, I think it came out holiday 2010. Pretty sure it did, yeah, 2010. Meaning it had already been out for two years by the time Kid Chris came out. So it's just kind of like you have an install base for this know, game. It was... it early, early, early 2011. February 26, 2011. 
So the beginning of the 2011. Okay. All right, that's fine. Uh, so, but still, early, early 2011, right? So it's like a three month difference from holiday 2011. But, you know, point is, my point simply being though is that they made more sense to have Kid Icarus come on the 3DS because 3DS has already been out for a little while, right? And that was an established system with a, with a large install base. The Wii was not there yet at all, right? The Wii was dead. And also, I mean, I think in retrospect, the 3DS was a better platform compared to the Wii U. Like, even if they had made it for the Wii U and, like, delayed it a little bit to have it come, you know, or just prepared it for the Wii U, like, it would not have done nearly as well. Right. It would have been a, a bomb. Yeah. So. And, I mean, that came out before the Wii U even launched, so it'd probably been worked on for a while there. So, and they might have brought over stuff from the Wii version. I think like it would have been a better console. game, though. On the Wii U, yeah. Yeah, because it wouldn't have, though, the, it like, had the control the assets, issue. None of the assets they had been working on would have... They would have had to make something completely different. Well, no, I mean, the, my point is, though, is that Soccer and his team would have known about the Wii U years beforehand, right? Like, mm -hmm. they would have developed that, all of it in mind for that, but they didn't. You know, they developed for, for the right. 3DS in mind, so... You know, oh well. But the future! You know, the future has many possibilities so you never know i think um i mean you just look at the demand for switch games right how look at how many games we're getting for from nintendo this year like big games right we got mario maker we're about to get actual chain we've just got fire emblem right we're getting luigi's mansion we're getting i mean town's got trademark but one sword and shield right luigi's mansion 3 link's awakening remake that's all this year the second half of 20 of 2019 2019 right because nintendo's just focusing on one platform now Instead of making two different Mario Karts every generation, two different Smash Bros. every generation, two, you know, a, a, a separate 3D Mario f Mario game for the handheld and home console, and the same thing with Zelda, they can just make one, right? Or when they have a sequel a few years later, they can do that. But the point is, they can that allows them to make other games, right? So they can get to other franchises. So the premise of seeing a 3D Donkey Kong or a Kid Icarus game or a Zero Wave Race, I think, are more likely on the Switch than previous generations. They're just making more yeah. games. Yeah, I agree. So we can keep believing. We can keep hoping. Keep up the faith. Keep praying. To Goddess Hylia. Seven Six Four added me. Why doesn't Sakurai want to work on another Kid Icarus game again? This is weird. I don't know. There's a, there's an interview. I don't think he. I don't remember him clearly stating exactly why. I think he just basically said he just wants someone else to have a chance on it. That's yeah. pretty much what I remember. He did say he wanted to work on other games than Smash, but Nintendo wanted him to work on Smash, so he worked on Smash. So, Masahiro Sakurai that. rules out a modern port of Kid Icarus Uprising. I don't think so. Oh, okay, this is, I'm talking about port. Oh, here's a quote. I could say that this was close to becoming the most difficult project in my entire career, both in terms of the team and the hardware. The team I had gathered differed greatly in culture and ways of thinking, so there was always confrontation. In addition, back when we were developing the game, we still couldn't make full use of power of the Nintendo 3DS. Some improvements in aspects such as the middleware were made later on, but since the game was being made in the initial stages of Nintendo 3DS development, we had a really hard time doing what we wanted to. If by lasting universe you mean to ask if there is a sequel, the answer is no. There's... For now, my thought is that perhaps we'll see someone else besides me make another Kid Icarus game in another 25 years. Oof. Right, so like... In another 25 years. Right. Oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, oh, God, indeed. Uh, so it's not really promising from what he's saying there, but point is, he doesn't seem to want to work on it. It, he, it doesn't seem like he really enjoyed the development for that game. Uh, so unfortunately, right, because it was a great game. But hey, if they decide to port it, you know, I think that is... That might be the, the play, right, to port it over... Because it'll be obviously easier to develop a, to, you know, just kind of improve that a little bit, get that on the Switch. And then if that does well, that can open a door, right? Like, oh, okay, if this series is kind of doing well in the system, maybe we can think about making an actual Kid Icarus game for the Switch eventually, or Switch 2 by that point, right? So, right. you know, I want it to happen, but Sakurai does not give us any hope for it, not really. Within 25 years. Yeah. Uh... Yeah. So, uh, where are we? Uh, anything else you want to sort of add on in terms of Rare IP coming to Switch? Or do you want to move on to just some Nintendo Direct speculation discussion? Uh, I don't think I have anything specific, so we can just move on. Oh, I know. Perfect Dark 
and Jet Force Gemini need to come. I want those. <laughs> I want every rare game, everything. Oh, actually, another game, another game that could come on rare replay besides uh, Star Fox Adventures. Oh, yeah. It's a game. You know what I mean? Like it's a game that would not be on rare re replay on Xbox, but could totally be on Switch. So Donkey Kong 64 mm -hmm. and Star Fox Adventures could be two games added to rare replay that wouldn't have been on Xbox no matter what. That'd be awesome. It'd be really cool. So I like. Uh, Star Fox Adventure for the most part. Um, I loved it. Yeah. Uh, there were some things I definitely didn't like either. I, I think it was... Re too long time out here. I believe it was reviewed fairly well. It was just kind of like not what the public wanted. It's kind of like a Wind Waker sort of situation or a Sunshine. Like, a lot of games on GameCube were like, okay, we're going to bring you this franchise, but we're going to Put a spin on it that you don't necessarily expect, you know. Or want. I uh, mean, I think Wind Waker aged it. gracefully. Oh, Wind Waker is amazing. Wind Waker aged so gracefully. Good. Um, Sunshine maybe has not aged gracefully, but I thought it was good. Um, I also liked, I liked, uh, I, I, I definitely like Star Fox Adventures, but I agree that Star Fox's salt was kind of more along the lines of what a Star Fox game should be. If only that game had online because the multiplayer and that was amazing and that had nothing to do with rare by the way honestly Star Fox Assault was okay I played it that I played it again like emulating it and I was like I love the design of this is not as good as I remember mm. no it Star was... Fox 64 was a better game it's still a better game if I had to play between if you told me which one? Like you sat me down for two televisions. One had Star Fox 64. One had Star Fox Assault. I'd be like, yeah, I'm playing Star Fox. The on foot mid aspects weren't like really well done. No. Um, but that doesn't mean they can't be well done. Mm -hmm. You know, when we're I'm, I'm just talking about like the future Star Fox. Like, it doesn't look like Nintendo wants to do that again. Actually, I have no idea what Nintendo's doing with Star Fox right now. No idea. I gotta think about that. Yeah. But uh, let's uh. Let's move on to some Nintendo Direct speculation. Right. So, there's going to be a Nintendo Direct. It's going to happen soon-ish. Not that soon. I don't think it's happening this soon. I only, I'm only i only talking about it now because, like I said at the beginning of the podcast, just because I made a video on it and like it kind of... We're just getting a lot of information right now that kind of changes the, the narrative a little bit. Um, but there will be a new Star Fox game at the Direct. It's going to be amazing. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm just, I'm joking, really. I want, I, I doubt it. I really doubt it. I was just saying that because we were just talking about it. But anyway, let me kind of just give you my spiel on why I think there's going to be a direct late September or early October. So here's the thing. You agree with me that Super Nintendo games are going to be separate from a direct, right? right. That, and if, if that's the case, they may even just announce that on September 18th, the anniversary of Nintendo Online to keep people subscribed. But then about a week later, we will get a presentation for Banjo Kazooie, say September 25th. That will be another Fire Pass character. There'll be Update 5.0. Heck, maybe that Update 5.0 will have a, a mode that might be more exciting than Online Tourney Mode and Stage Creator. And if that's the case, it might get people to stay on the you know Smash Online, playing Nintendo Online. I think that's gonna happen. And then after that, I think there'll be a direct. So I'm not saying it'll be a week after, like the last week of September, but it could be early October, which would give it be a good time because then you could insert Luigi's Mansion, have like an in-depth part talking about Luigi's Mansion in the direct because Luigi's Mansion is coming out at the end of October. And the game hasn't talked about enough yet. But let me explain why I think Banjo is coming out on the 25th. So there is, I'm probably deleted the image. I probably deleted it already. Uh, unless I have a website for it. I think I deleted it. Nope, it's right here. All right, good. So hopefully you guys can see this. I talked about this during, during my video, but basically there's a trend between Fighter Pass character releases in Smash Brothers and Smash Amiibo releases. So if we look at the release date for Daisy, Ken, and Link, they came out um, April 11th and 12th, right? Uh, Joker came out April 17th, right? So now let's look at Isabel, Pichu, and po um, Pokemon Trainer. They came out July 26th. Hero came out July 31st. So for these three, came well, I think you know it's a little 
came out a day earlier, but you know, for Ken and Daisy, five days later. P2, Isabel, Pokemon Trainer, five days later for the hero. And we have the dates for, see, see what I mean with the whole waiting out? Stop. Anyway, so Snake, Ivysaur, and Squirtle. This is, it's not for Smash, so it doesn't count. But these three are coming out on the 20th of September. So five days later is 25th, which is a, can I pull my calendar? Yep. It is a, I don't know if you can see it on my, on my podcast, but it's the 25th is a Wednesday. So I'm thinking that there will be a presentation on the Wednesday and Banjo will drop then. That makes sense. When was I saying it was going to happen? It also Did matches I, up I, with I, your theory. It, it matches up with your theory of like because it's like a two month I, to two and a half month window for between each character. I think I actually did predict it to be on the twenty fifth in my in my video I made, which I was wrong. But the hero by a, oh twenty one days. Right, um, but I think I mean there's there's, there's got there's there's leeway there, right? right there's but, leeway. But Joker came well first first Piranha Plot came out January thirty first. Um, hero, I mean Joker came out April seventeenth. Then Hero came out July 31st, and now we're sort of thinking that the end of September is Banjo Kazooie. There's obviously a, like a difference of a week or two for each of these characters, but it's roughly almost two months with you know mm -hmm. plus or minus two weeks between each character. Right. So um, you know, I, I, it fits. It fits the that that pattern as well. Right. Not to mention you can think you think about this. There's only two more characters to be revealed, and the three that have been revealed, and by the record, for the record, Piranha Plant does not count, and for the Fighter's Pass, right? We bring him up because he's part of the pattern for the developing characters, but he's not part of the Fighter's Pass. I cannot tell you how many people have said, oh, but Piranha Plant's part of the Fighter's Pass in comments from Smash Bros. Nope, it's not the case. It's not true. No. Um, so we have two characters left, right? And the three that have been revealed, Joker was at the Game Awards, and then Hero and Banjo were at E3. So... They've all been revealed in, in major events, right? That really only leaves um, the Game Awards left in terms of major events because it's all supposed to be out by February 2020. So my thinking is that the final one will be revealed at the Game Awards and there will be the fourth one will be at a Nintendo Direct, a major Nintendo Direct. And going by the, the last couple of years, we've gotten major fall Nintendo Directs September 13th. I think it's going to be a little bit later, but the point is we have a major Nintendo Direct in the fall time that's probably the best time to reveal the fourth character because there's no other major events that I think would make sense for it. Right. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm not completely convinced that he will be on the 25th, I think. Oh, for Banjo? Does fit a, yeah, I mean, it doesn't have Banjo. to be there, but I, I think it's going to, you know, give or take a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. I definitely think it's going to be either that or the first or second week of October. Those are what I'm thinking. So my thing is that every character for Smash Brothers has had like, well, every character too, <laughs> Hero and Joker, they had their own separate presentation from a direct, right? And if I think that they need to reveal the, if, if they need going to reveal the fourth DLC character in any Nintendo direct, I think they're gonna reveal Banjo fully, talk about him, have him come out before the Nintendo direct and then reveal the fourth character, yeah. right? Meaning that the Banjo thing would have to happen before. So if Banjo comes out, then this is, uh, these are assumptions I'm making, right? But assuming it follows the pattern of the previous characters, Banjo would come out before the Direct. So if Banjo comes out the second week of October, that doesn't leave that much time before the end of October Luigi's Mansion comes out to talk about Luigi's Mansion in this Direct. Now granted, it doesn't have to be that way. They could have a separate Luigi's Mansion Direct and have it and save this major Nintendo Direct for maybe November. They could do that, right? Right. I don't think they would do that. I think it's too honest. late. I think November is too late. Yeah, November is a little too late. November, you would need to. I feel like I don't know because they don't have much. We don't know about December. Like maybe they could talk about games in December. Well, that's the other but thing. November, There's no published title game slated for December. You got Pokemon. You got whatever may be in December, and then you have 2020, which would be weird for them to have a November direct that seemingly the most amount of games they would have to talk about would be in 2020 that seems a little strange i think that they need to if there is anything coming out in december and which i think is a chance right because last year we got smash in december the year before that we got xenoblade and 
this November, all they have is Pokemon. Granted, they have Luigi's Mansion coming out in the end of October. Mm -hmm. It just, in terms of in-house games coming from Nintendo at the end of the year, compared to last year and the year before, they have a little less. Um, I think, and I, I think you'll agree with me, it seems like Animal Crossing was originally yeah. meant to come out in December, right? And it got delayed to March. So maybe they yeah, just won't I have anything. Think it was going to be a December game. Yeah. I, I, I actually did see your video on uh, the your direct predictions. Oh. I kind of agree that they may have something like that they've been holding back or just waiting for a good time and that they will release in December. And I definitely do agree that Pikmin 3 port is probably the most likely out of all of them. It just, it, it's, it's one of those things where like, because at this point, it's too late into the year to reveal something major to come out in December, right? But if it is like a port or HD remaster, not as big of a deal because most of those things are have a smaller window between announcement and release. Mm -hmm. So if there is an, a Nintendo Direct at the end of September, early October, I think that does give them enough time to announce um, something like Pikmin 3 maybe to the Switch or another kind of port come, to come out in December. And I, I think, because if Animal Crossing was delayed into March, right, which is, I, we agree, that's probably what, what, what happened, that makes sense for them, like, oh, we no longer have a December slot game. And if they originally were planning to release something as major as Animal Crossing in December, then maybe they still want something to come out in December, right? Like, maybe they think, oh, we still should have something come out in December. Then maybe they pull off, they bring out a game that's probably been waiting and ready, something that's probably already been developed like a metro prime trilogy or a pikmin 3 i am not predicting metro prime trilogy for december as much as i want it to happen right. i i've learned my lesson it's coming out tomorrow <laughs> no um i i think it's possible but i think it's more likely metro prime trilogy is like into the future yeah i i think that game is gonna have a a bigger focus for i i definitely think they want to bring back Metroid, like Prime is a thing. Um, so I think they're gonna have a bigger focus on Metroid Prime Trilogy than just being like, oh, you know, we'll just dump it off the December slot just cause. Cause I think they, they, they cause as we've, we've talked about this a lot, but Prime has been a game that's always reviewed so well, but not really sold so well. Yeah. And yeah, so man. I think with a Metroid Prime Trilogy, their goal, one of their goals would obviously to piece fans who want Metroid, but also... To make it a, a contender, a legit right, series. Bring Prime back into the spotlight, back into the news. I want Metroid to have a Fire Emblem-like awakening. Pun intended. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually really ironic, I think, that Fire Emblem Awakening was kind of like the series that revitalized fire emblem i don't know if you know the story about it but apparently fire emblem awakening before it was successful was intended to be the last fire emblem game right but it did so well that it was an awakening for the series which is ironic because it's called awakening uh, and since then fire emblem has become pretty popular on 3ds but now with three houses i don't know if you guys heard this but three houses which has been out for like less than a month right it's like it's not that long it's already the second best-selling fire emblem game ever it's going to be the best-selling Fire Emblem game. Yeah. It is doing so well, right? And that makes me really happy. Because I want... This is a series that originally wasn't even coming to the States because they just didn't think it would sell here, right? And now, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's it's a big deal. It's a really big deal. I'm really yeah. excited for Fire Emblem. And I am hopeful Nintendo can do that with a couple other other franchises, including Metroid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I definitely think... Especially in the in the West, like shooters are such a big deal that you Metroid would think. Would well, you know what it needs, right? Good. It needs more waifus. Red Ridley's gotta they gotta so. add female Ridley. You gotta add female yeah, Silex. Okay. Female all Metro a lot of Metroid. You gotta make the boss a Metroid queen. Just waifus ever not. That's obviously not the direction Metroid needs to go in. Um, I mean. Yes, you got Samus, but she's in a suit most of the time. Mm -hmm. It's got to be a different thing. I think they got to go the horror route. Like, that, yeah. I think... Because they need to do something to change the Metroid series, right? So rather than going into, hey, let's have everyone get married and be waifus and still kill each other in Fire Emblem, stop it. 
Oh, I hate, I hate it when he barks. There's just something I can do about it. It's just annoying. Whatever. Um, Metroid. I think they need to go in a different direction. I think horror might be the way to go for it. To really, really push that. It's not horror. They got to do something to, to kind of really distinguish it. Push it in a different direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I... The thing about Metroid and horror is they have to not slow down the gameplay. I feel like there is a lot of horror games that purposely make the gameplay slower so that they can get you. Um, or they'll make you... I don't, I don't know. Metroid... You, if anything, Metroid Prime should be faster than the older games. So I hope that they don't make it too like closed off too close quarter obviously i don't want them to be like oh it's just fully open world metroid and it's just this is the breath of the wild but metroid like not, that's not good no it's that's gotta good. be something that, that really appeals to the atmosphere and the narrow corridor exploration the metroidvania kind of kind of style right. you, you gotta but do something that feels metroid narrow because metroid prime also had a lot of open no i think there should be open, open areas. areas in fact I, I'm, I'm okay with having even more open large areas that's mm -hmm. great but it's got to be mixed in with a lot of close corridor narrow creepy areas right and all of it's got to be like an exotic alien world with a lot of variety a lot to explore a lot to see a lot of depth within there within the lore and just things going on and all feeling very natural and organic but alien at the same time and one thing that's really cool about Metroid is that oftentimes in the Metroid games you feel like you're getting deeper and deeper, right? Like you, you literally for some of them, especially the 2D ones, you are just getting deeper and deeper into the world, like down. Like you want to feel like you're just getting deeper and deeper into this alien world, right? Getting, you know, more and more immersed at the same time, finding more, growing stronger as well, learning more about what actually happened, right? But that's the thing. You're learning about what actually happened. So like with a lot of horror games, Oftentimes, when you're in this horror, this world, this horror world, you're—it's not like enemies are being thrown at you left and right. They're kind of more like seeing like the after effects of some sort of negative thing, and then like you're like you're still seeing signs that it might still be there, something awry, right? And then it comes at you. Mm -hmm. So, I love for that to be a really big element for the Metroid series. And no, it's not at all related to this topic because I do not think Metroid is going to be even. I don't think. I mean, like, I always. I whenever I talk about like Nintendo being maybe announced, I'm always going to bring up Metroid because I want it to happen. I think it's always, you know, it's always an option for Nintendo to bring it up, but it's probably not happening this year. Probably not. Mm -hmm. But still, I mean, we agree. It needs a hook. Yeah. What else could it do besides horror? Waifu Wars I'm in space. Sure. Honestly, I don't think they need to change it so much. I think I think the environment the in it in its own, like the Switch ecosystem, mm -hmm. could allow it to succeed just on that. If they just market it right, right, they push it right. They gotta market it. I think it's going to be a very, very visually appealing game. Which will get people into it. I hope so. Did you hear? We actually another bit of news that came out this week. Uh, apparently, like, half, half the Metro Prime Three team is still wor working at Retro Studios. I did hear about them. Yeah. So you know, now not too many of the key members from the original Metro Prime are still there, but they've hired a lot of new talent as well, right? So mm -hmm. there's that, and uh, Kensuke Tanabe is still at the focus point for this project. So I do think it's going to have the proper direction here. I still, I do think it's still going to feel entirely like Metroid. I mean, there's a, Nintendo abandoned a project with someone else and they moved on to Retro Studios for a reason, not just because they had no other option. I think. Yeah. That's what that's what some quotes we've heard suggest at least. Yeah. yeah. So then, um, you know, just kind of going back to the direct though, just to kind of maintain some focus here, and I'll check in with the comments. Um, Actually, let's check on the comments first, because we're, we're talking about Metroid. Uh, let's see here. Terry, Terry added me. I'm sure we'll get more info on Bayonetta 3 in the next direct. Maybe show Shantae, and then Seven Sirens as well, and reveal Challenger Pack number 4. I He hopes it will be Shantae or Gino. That'd be really cool, um, for sure. You know, um, I think it's interesting you bring up Bayonetta 3. Well, I'm personally not 
thinking Bayonetta 3 will be shown off, I do agree that this Direct is going to start talking about 2020 games. For example, last year, they announced both Luigi's Mansion 3 and Animal Crossing, right? So I do think this Direct, you know, considering the historical precedent, will start building out the lineup for next year. And I mean, the, the truth is, if the Direct's coming out this fall, there isn't really that much more to announce that's new for this year by this point. Right. It would be sort of like setting the groundwork for the early on next year at least. Mm -hmm. So Bayo 3 Bayonetta, is an option. Yeah, I think Bayonetta 3 could get a trailer. Especially if Astro Chain's seen already out. Of in a long time. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's possible. I, want, I just wonder if they'd want to do it so soon after the release of Astral Chain. Right, maybe they'd want to wait until maybe early next year instead to start talking about it. Uh, maybe. But I think it, it is possible. And even you know, if it's not Bayonetta 3, I think we're, we're going to start seeing some games from 2020 start to be talked about at the Direct. Lucas is talking about Overwatch-style multiplayer for Metroid. Maybe. That'd be fun to see if they can pull that off and a great single player. Sab64 is saying rated M for Metroid. As much as I would want that, I just feel like it won't happen because Nintendo. But then again, I don't know. It might, making it rated M it. might say something, you know, like it might have, you know what I mean? Like if Nintendo's like, oh man, Nintendo's coming with an M rated game. And like in this day and age, people will talk about that, right? Like it, it wouldn't be like Geist, like back in the GameCube era. This would be a, a different environment. People would turn their heads if Nintendo turned one of their classic franchises into an M-rated series. Now, do I think it's going to happen? No. But I think if they did it, it could be successful. Mm -hmm. I but, don't even know if they necessarily need to go into M. No, it doesn't need to be M-rated like, to, be, to be creepy. Right. It doesn't. And I, I don't know. Seeing things like Torok 2 and just how cool it looks when you like it you shoot and just like chunks and just like a, you know the the enemy disappear and just like so much blood spilling out i think that would be cool in metroid to have like a, a gore physics engine like that like torok does i think that'd be really cool hmm. torok's animations and like the quality of the animations for the enemies is insane like it's it's better than some of the stuff we have today like, yeah it's great yeah so i'd love to see that kind of thing incorporated into metroid you know, you're shooting an enemy and, you know, it starts missing body parts. You start seeing some blood spraying out. That would be, that'd be really awesome. Really cool death animations that actually are impacted by, like, where you shoot. That, I would that love that. I would love that. I mean, I mean, I've talked about it before, right? But, you know, like, a part of what became the original Retro Studios team, you know, originally worked on Turok, mm -hmm. right? So before Retro Studios was Retro Studios, a lot of the people at Agua Entertainment you know they moved over but they originally made two rocks so there is kind of like that similarity there already uh so i i, I think yeah there's there's something interesting to what you're saying though with the gore system i don't know man maybe maybe there's something there so shadow of nexus is saying i don't think metroid needs horror i think nintendo has eternal darkness for that if hey i'm all for a new eternal darkness i'm all for that will it have i'm probably not but you know never say never it's NAK. Just Metroid Prime already has a lot of creepy elements to it. Yeah, it, it's it's like already this. creepy, right? It's like, pretty, yeah. Metroid was inspired from Alien, which is a scary movie. Mm -hmm. So we're just wanting them to go more into that. We're not right. necessarily wanting them to like completely change how the game is to be a horror game. Just have some more horror elements. Just make the game scarier. And it's, I mean, the thing, is, like, it's kind of like a borderline situation because the Metroid games were, like, Metroid 2, the Metroid Prime 2, I should say. Well, both are scary, but Metroid Prime 2 Echoes, you know, does have, has some dark elements. Like, there's something there. But I was about to read NAK's comment. I never played any SNK, SNK game, but I've heard about Kula Diamond, and she would be good for a full-on chirokinetic game. I don't, I don't, I haven't played them either, so I can't. I don't know what that means. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't add much to that, unfortunately. Listen, K, I, I, I recognize it. I know SNK. Is it a fighting Halo series? It was on the Switch. I believe it, the the recent SNK SNK game that came out was a fighting game. 
Mm. I don't know yeah. if they're all fighting games. Yeah, I, I, unfortunately, I just don't know much about enough about the series to really speak on it. It, it was a very, very, very waifu game. It's like that's, a waifu fighting That's good. Game. That's nice. It's it weird. It's always, good, always gonna be appreciated. Lucas G, when do you think we'll see our first look, first real trailer for Metro Prime 4? I'm thinking we may see it as early as E3 2020. Uh, I want it to be E3 2020. I'm gonna right? say 2020. I'm gonna say never. <laughs> it's I'm not kidding. Happening. No, it's, it's gonna it's gonna happen someday. Uh, I'm just right now like I'm of the frame of mind that I should really be cautious about my expectations for Metro Prime 4 mm -hmm. because they restarted development. And I don't know how big of a product this is going to be. I don't know where Retro Studios is at. We haven't seen a game from Retro Studios in a long time, right? I've talked about on the channel how I think they may have been working on a Nintendo Land, right? But that's that's a mini game compilation kind of game, mm -hmm. right? If that's real, uh, so you know that doesn't yeah. really speak to hey, we're going to make a giant futuristic sci-fi adventure game. Right, and we're not sure if they were able to bring anything over from the previous project right. or not, or you know where they had to, like, do they have to start from scratch? Do they have to start storyboarding? <laughs> like, what? Where exactly did they I, have to I, start? I, when they I have to guess that they will take something from it, right? How mm -hmm. much of that will be will like, kind of expedite the the development? I don't know, um, but there is a couple points to be made. Uh, one. Retro Studios has never taken like more than three years to make a Metroid game, so there's that to consider, right? Uh, but granted, that was before the HD era, right. so take that into consideration as well. But, you know, we have heard that N the Retro Studios had a demo they showed Nintendo, and it was once Nintendo saw the demo, they, they decided to restart development and hand over the reins right. to Retro Studios, implying that whatever they saw in that demo was impressive. So, you know, if they had yeah. a running demo, maybe there's some sort of engine in place already, some sort of framework for the game. Mm -hmm. Maybe that could expedite, if that's already there, that, you know, it wouldn't, I guess the development wouldn't take as long if they already had something sort of working. Now, I've had some, I don't even want to call it a theory, I just think it's a possibility, right? And we've talked about it before, right? But we, we've heard from several sources, the Metro Prime Trilogy has been basically just re ready and waiting to go, right? And it's really just down to Nintendo to decide when they want to release it. But what if Metro Prime Trilogy is more than just like a minorly enhanced Metro Prime Trilogy? What if it's actually running on a new engine, right? And it's greatly enhanced. Now, as exciting as that would be, right? It, 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 I do I do agree that's maybe, you know, putting our expectations a bit too high, but if, if there, it is running on a new engine, you know, Maybe that's something that Retro Studios has been working on for a while, actually. Yeah. I mean, right? maybe it's something that's more to the level of Spyro Reignited Trilogy or, or uh, Crash and the same. Nah, thing. I can't even. As much as I would want that, it just doesn't seem like, you know, like it just it seems like a lot to to believe, you, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but if that is I'm the just case, saying, like we we have seen other developers, right? This True. Pull off three games in one and have a completely new engine, like modern level of visual quality you know and if that's the case then they should have some sort of framework in place that would shorten the development time for metro prime 4. but i don't that, that we don't know if that's the case at all they could be starting from complete scratch and if that's the case like it the game's development could take like four years right yeah i mean now four I years is a lot is a I would say most games don't take four years, right? But they have a high expectation for Metro Prime 4. And I would say if they announced the restart development for Metro Prime 4 at the beginning of 2019, that it actually happened probably at the at the begin at the end of 2018. So then if it's I would say worst case scenario, worst case scenario, Metro Prime 4 comes out at the end of 2022. Worst case scenario. Um but what? But it could even come out as early as 2021. Some people are expecting right. maybe even this year. I am not expecting that. But maybe it could come out at the end of 2021, right? If there was already yeah an engine in place. I don't place. think we'll see it next year though. I think if we if it was going to come in 2021, we'd see it in 2021. I think they could theoretically show it off. So 
but I don't think they will because I actually think Mario Odyssey 2 and Breath of the Wild 2 are going to get a big focus next year. I think there's a possibility we see both Super Mario Odyssey 2 and Breath of the Wild 2 next year, right? Mm -hmm. um, which would be awesome. Now, maybe Metro Prime Trilogy could come out next year, right? Maybe. So, especially if they think that they are within... If they do think Metro Prime 4 could come out by the end of 2021, maybe. But it, it really comes down to what, how far along that game is. And if that's, I do think, I do think theoretically, if they were to reveal Metro Prime Trilogy, um, that they could tease Metro Prime 4 on top of that. It really, it, yeah. it, it, it depends on a lot of things though, because if, Metro, if Metro Prime Trilogy is like actually like running on a new engine, it's more of a major remake, right? Then they don't need to tease Metro Prime 4. Right, but if Metro Prime Trilogy is basically just taking what was on the Wii, right, and just kind of like brushing it up a little bit and upscaling it to HD, if it's just that, then they def whenever they reveal it, they should definitely tease Metro Prime 4. It really comes down to like how much they've done with that. You know what I mean? Right. I don't know. Even if it is just a simple remaster, I don't know if they would tease Metro Prime 4. Just because I don't know how far in development they are. Right. And they don't want they, if it's gonna come out in 2022, they're definitely not gonna show it off next year with alongside Metro Prime Trilogy. No. You know. No. Like that um, would happen. But if it's coming out 2021. Maybe 2021. Yeah. Then yeah, but we we have no idea. We really don't. Um, because there's too many ifs. Like like is there an engine in place? Right. Are they borrowing aspects from the game? How big is the team? How ready are they for this? Right. Like what kind of scope do they want for this game? Like there's so many right. questions. Uh, and because Metroid hasn't been made in years, we just don't know. We don't have any real precedent that makes, that give us a good idea of where this yeah. is going to be. But uh, one interesting thing, though, is that Metroid Prime Trilogy has not been revealed yet. If we assume that it is real, that it's been in the works and it's been just kind of waiting, it would lead one to believe that they've been, they, they intentionally did not reveal it because Prime 4 got delayed. And they're saving it so it's closer to the release of that game to build up hype for that. So, regardless of if there's a teaser or not, I would say that once Prime Trilogy is announced, we are like maybe within a we are within for sure within two years of the release of Prime Four, maybe sooner, maybe a year and a half. Okay. Right. So, if I Prime think Trilogy also go on. the possibility of them releasing Prime Trilogy next year. I've talked about this on the podcast before. But Prime Trilogy next year. 2D Metroid 2021 and Prime 4 in 2022. Yes. There's also the possibility that there's a 2D Metroid next year, then Prime Trilogy, then. Right. Trilogy, I, I feel like I feel like if they're if they're pulling back Prime Trilogy, it's because they wanted to build up towards Prime 4, like you you also mentioned earlier, right? So yeah, I think it makes more sense to have Prime Trilogy come out a year before Prime 4 as opposed to Prime Trilogy 2D Metroid Prime 4. Because otherwise, you know, if they're going to do that, they might as well just release Prime Trilogy this year, especially during the first half of 2019 when it was expected, and that the first half of 2019 was kind of barren, right? So I, I think if if they are going to, if it would be 2D Metroid, then Prime Trilogy, then Prime 4. Mm -hmm. Or just 2D Metroid and Prime Trilogy in the same year. They're not really the same thing. So I think you can pull right, off, I think I you can do both. I feel like you're Especially if they're in two different halves of a year. Right. I feel like it'd be better if they spaced it out a little bit more than that, but you don't know. You, never know, so. you don't know. We don't know. So, I mean, I would say a teaser next year isn't out of the question, but I, I wouldn't bet on it. I'm not expecting it. Yeah. I'd say so. there's just very small, like maybe a 10% chance. Yeah, yeah. So we just spent 20 minutes ans answering one question. It's Metro. You gotta talk about yeah. it. Yeah. It's absolutely. like if you bring up Zelda. <laughs> Except Zelda's worse. Mm. Zelda we'll talk about for an hour. Off one question. Mm-hmm. Mastermind, waifu wars in in space, a space opera to remember. That's it. <laughs> that's that's the next one. Shadow of Nexus. Is Nintendo gonna promote Bayonetta three with with Playboy like with three little? I have no idea. Bayonetta three with Playboy. I didn't even know that yeah. happened. I had no idea that happened. Yeah. That's pretty nuts. Maybe, man. That'd be interesting. Terry, maybe we could see a Pikmin trilogy. Yeah, that'd be cool. Although, I'm more inclined to believe it's just Pikmin 3 
and then eventually Pikmin 4, because that's just what the rumors have suggested, that there's a Pikmin 3 port coming to Switch. Right. Shout out Nexus. If Nintendo had to make any game M any game M rated, it would be Metroid, but it usually is T. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm right there with you. I, I do like the idea of Eternal Darkness coming back, but I just don't think that's super likely. Yeah. Yeah. Computer robots, you need to feed your dog. Well, technically, he's my brother's dog. So, he needs to feed him. And I think he already ate, so he's fine. Yeah, so where are we now? Terry added me. We might get an update about Metro Prime 4 during the direct. Hey! What if it. I'm not gonna predict it, but when it happens, I am so ready. I am that always is, ready. I'll say there's a 1% chance of that happening. 1% is possible. Science Joe saying, I think we'll get a, sin a cinematic trailer for Metro Prime 4 at, e at, 20 at E3 2020 showing a bit of story. Then at 2021, E3 will get a new gameplay trailer. Not out of the question. Like, yeah. if, if, wow. if Prime 4 is coming out holiday 2021, I do think it could be teased at E3 2020. That's pretty much exactly what I think is happening with Breath of the Wild 2. I think Breath of the Wild 2 is coming out holiday 2020. Right, and it was teased this past year. Other people will disagree with me, but you know, I think yeah. a year and a half between announcement to release is definitely within possibility. It just really comes down to if they can really pull off a 2021 release. Right. And again, if they did, if they are using some assets from the original development uh, of Prime 4, and they had some sort of engine in place already from Retro Studios, then definitely at late 2021, I think is possible. Watch it come out next year. If it comes uh, out next year, that'd be... I can't imagine it'd be that great of a game, to be honest. No, yeah. Science Joe saying, if Metro Prime 4 and Breath of the Wild 2 come out in the same year, it would be the best year of the Switch. Hey, it, it'd be amazing, but I think I think Mario Odyssey 2 and Breath of the Wild 2 is more likely for next year than Prime 4 and Breath of the Wild 2. Yeah. Terry, Nintendo could surprise everyone with the reveal of Mother 3 in an Earthbound trilogy. It's happening. Confirmed. You heard it. You heard it here. Terry, we could get the reveal of Metro Prime Trilogy and the release date of this December. Possible, but I'm not expecting it. I'm going to roll with Pikmin 3, if anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Savage just said, what if Metro Prime 4 never comes out on the Switch? It's going to come out on the Switch. You but it, it might be, it could be a cross-platform thing. Where, like, yeah, like a Twilight Princess or Breath of the Wild it's situation. Possible. I mean, in the, the videos I was, I made... I made two videos and they were very much leading into each other, so I don't remember right. which one I set it in. Mm -hmm. um, but I suggested that Nintendo may want to make a new Switch in either holiday 2022 or 2023. When you say new Switch, do you mean Switch Pro or like next I gen Switch? I mean the Switch? new, the next gen Switch. And because I think that's by about when? the time when they'll. By when? 2022 to 2023. Because I think that's about the time when PS4 and base Xbox One will stop getting ports of games and then it would be just next gen and that's when i think nintendo might have to worry about third party support yeah and plus they'll just be so behind they'll be so behind so yeah. i think it would make sense to release a new one and that'd be about five six years that's a good life cycle for the switch and you release another hybrid same concept but you know you do new things with it obviously do you think there'll be a switch pro then yeah, it'd still be a Switch Pro because that, that wouldn't. So even Switch be Pro comes any, out summer right. next year, and then two and a half years later they come out Holiday 2022 with a new Switch. Yeah, yeah, cool. I think that works. Two and a half years after a Switch Pro makes sense. I, I think I could see that, and that would place um the cycle. So if it comes out early 2017, it would be it would be a five and a half year cycle if it came out Holiday 2022. That'd be pretty good. They could pull that off. I, th I I think that could happen, for sure. So um, all right. So I where are we now? Are we, are we pretty much at the natural conclusion for this podcast, or is there more to discuss? Um, Ma I see Mastermind saying so. Metro Prime Four is the Final Fantasy VII remake for Nintendo. Kinda. Okay. It's it's pretty. Like that. Very similar. Yeah. Um. Shadow of Nexus. Do I do think it could be cross gen. Yeah. It. it makes sense especially if it is like a a four-year development cycle from when they restarted 2022 it absolutely yeah. will be 
Uh, if it's 2022, I think it'll be a cross-gen release. Yeah. But who knows? It, it could be sooner. Recessive Gamer, wh which do you think will release sooner? The next Paper Mario or the next Mario and Luigi? Mm. We haven't... I'll tell you what's coming. The new Mario RPG with G. There you go. I that actually I actually could happen. I Maybe think it could happen. I think the safest bet is Paper Mario. Mm -hmm. Right? I or think... you know what it could do? They could be Paper Mario and Gino's just in it. That'd be cool. Yeah. Honestly, why not? Yeah. I think Paper Mario is I think Paper Mario was the one that got the last game, right? Or did they release a Mario and Luigi after Color Splash? I there was a Mario. Wasn't there like a Mario and Luigi game that came out on 3DS not too long ago? Like yeah, I think I isn't it like was... the last game like to come out on 3DS? I think it was like a remake, but it is technically a Mario and Luigi oh, game. Oh yeah, they they've done some remakes. That was 2016. It's very confusing. Luigi... Yeah. Paper Jam was 2015. For Paper so, Mario. So yeah, other than the remakes. Well, there's Paper Color Mario Splash. 2016. Color Splash came out 2016. Yeah, October 7th. And then Paper Jam came out 2015. That's true. Sometime between. December 3rd. Um. So yeah, Color Splash is. So Paper Mario has had the, the newest new entry, but. Paper Mario, I feel like it's also a bigger deal than Mario and Luigi, hmm. and it's been the one that's on consoles, so it's, it's just been the bigger games, I feel like. But it's also been the one that's been, like, nobody knows if they're gonna actually make a good one. Like, at least Mario and Luigi, they've had good games recently. Right. Well, I mean, the last Mario and Luigi wasn't that good, but it was at least better than, like, Sticker Star. Or Color Splash. I think it was about on par with Color Splash. But then before then, like, all the other Mario and Luigi games were, like, amazing. The only one that's actually been, like, just okay is Paper Jam. I want Mario guy. RPG. <laughs> I want a, a actually good new Paper Mario game. Partners. No stickers. Normal RPG system. No stickers. Crazy, wacky characters. And no stickers. What if like the box art is like now with no stickers? Our best feature yet, the greatest Paper innovation. Paper Mario non-sticker star. There you go. Uh, so uh, Shove Next has added me. Do you want to see a very powerful console-only version of the Switch next gen? I'm sick of games like Breath of the Wild lagging so much, and it's much like a butter smooth on PC. I uh, don't think they would do that. Honestly, I don't think they need to, just because. There's so many. The the chips that Nvidia has are so much better than what's in the Switch already that they could make something that's like at least five times, if not more. Next, ne by 2023, they could make something that's like PS4 Pro in a Switch. So I don't think they need to. Yeah. Uh. No, it's not happening. So, like, I think a lot of people started talking about it because they saw this connection between, oh, okay, so you have regular Switch. Okay, so cheaper is Switch. Let's take out the console ability of the Switch Lite. Mm -hmm. So, like, oh, okay, what if they make a Pro Switch and take out the portable ability of... Right, the... I talked about that in a video before, but I didn't actually think it was going to happen. So, here's the thing, right? It's The issue with that is that the Switch Lite is meant to be like a bargain system right for those who want to play switch games on the go right uh but the a switch pro is a premium right a pro or a plus or deluxe whatever they call it i'm going with plus um they call it that it's all suggestive of a premium system so a premium system isn't missing features you're not going to take out one of the biggest best features of the switch with a premium system. Right. So there's, in my opinion, there is basically no way that's happening. Unless- And and you're not satisfying the people who want better experiences on the go. Like that just right. is a thing that's not being done. Like you're only getting the current Switch experience with the light 
and with the new Switch, as far as graphics go, right? If they released up, I've I've said the same thing um, in like live streams and stuff, like about a 4K dock. Like the problem with that is there's no handheld upgrade, so you're getting the same handheld performance, but you're only getting better dock performance. So there's a it's just a big part of the Switch that's not being upgraded, which is just weird. Yeah. You just upgrade both. Yeah. Um. Now. 4K dock? Like. I, I think a 4K dock with a Switch Pro, yeah. I don't think they'd sell it on its own. Like, it, it just said, like, it, so. and, it, and it's only compatible with a Switch Pro? Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't think it would be that. So basically. It's just basically it. a, a beefier dock that comes with additional GPU and maybe a couple cooling fans so it can like overclock and that extra GPU could help it, you know, have better, you know, textures and stuff like of, of that nature, run at a higher resolution. Um, I think the main point of the 4K dock and the main difference, honestly, is I don't necessarily think it needs a GPU inside it. Maybe like a small, like one just for upscaling and like anti-aliasing or something like that, like mm. post the effects. The main issue with the Switch dock for a Switch Pro is that the HDMI port in it doesn't support 4K 60. It only supports 4K 30. The current dock. So I, yes. Um, it also, of course, doesn't have an Ethernet or yeah. things like that that yeah. we want. Right. So I think that would be the main difference. I think it would be... Premium you know, things that Nintendo right. would like, oh, we can make... I don't think it would necessarily be like, oh, we have this... All a GPU inside the dock. I don't think it's first off. I don't think it's required for a Switch Pro, and secondly, I'm not sure how they would price that. I'm not sure how much it would cost because it's already going to be a lot of money for them to put in a new chipset in the Switch itself, and you want to add a graphics card inside the dock. Like, on top of that, I don't know if they would want to do that for a Switch Pro. Maybe like a next generation Switch, though. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so I think it makes sense for Nintendo to continue to focus on it. Just there being a Switch and in the portability, like that's what works for them. They need to stick with that, right? I think making a dedicated home console will feel backwards, like actually backwards, right? It, it's just right. going to feel lesser than whatever Switch is now. Like that's the main selling point for a Switch. You would need if you're going to make a dedicated home console. You have to have it on par with the other consoles. There's no excuse at that point. If it's not on par with the Xbox Scarlet and the PS5, then it's just, why, why? Why does it exist? Right, but, um, and Either you're, you're gonna release this hybrid that has its own unique thing that Nintendo, you know, always does unique things. Right, hybrid. but if you do the docking Main thing, you can for... enable it to still run games better, right? If you mm -hmm. really want that optimal, like upscaled sort of experience with a higher frame rate they could still do that with a more powerful newer switch that right. maybe offers and an additional don't... dock with some extra things to pull right. off and they don't have to compete in power and price directly with the other systems if they do a hybrid right. yeah i mean and also you know if they have a premium system the premium system isn't appealing to the main market so they don't need to try to go for the affordability route with that they can just go all out if they want to make a 400 450 dollar heck if they really want to go balls out, I, they're not. It's not gonna happen. It's I think four hundred dollars. I don't think they would ever. Yeah, I don't think they'd ever go. Balls but imagine out. if the if next year they came out with a five hundred dollars system, but it was a an, a super enhanced switch that had a you know a ten eighty p screen that it promises to run every game at ten eighty p. You know, upscales everything ten eighty p on the go, right? With like a, a ridiculous ten hour battery life, and then. Um, in docked it upscales everything to 4k has the whole checkerboard 60 fps thing like it can do all of that at five dollars a lot of money yeah. it's not Especially i don't think since I don't... next holiday the next gen systems will be launching for 500 yeah it's kind of be weird there, yeah there, there'd be comparisons right it, it'd probably be a bad idea numbers. uh but i i guess um 400 is probably the best they can do for a switch premium system yeah and i think the switch is hampered enough to where a premium system is like more people be interested in than it than say the xbox one x because the xbox one for most people that's already good enough but the switch is so much more 
so much worse, so much more yeah. hampered, so much more pared back that a lot more people would be like, oh, it's only $100 more for this way better version of the Switch that yeah. I don't have to worry about playing Wolfenstein at, you know, like 560p at 25 frames per second at, you know? Like, oh, I can I can play it at 1080p at 60 for $100 more, or, you know, nine, you know, a full 720p 60, or, you know, whatever it's going to be. Mm. I think that would draw in even more casual players who wouldn't, because just because it's so far back, it's not good enough. Like the base, like third party on the Switch, uh, for a lot of people, like just paying $100 more for like an actually like really good version would be worth it. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So, I mean, let's, let's get through the chat and I guess basically call it a night. Um, so you guys have any, any other points you want us to bring up or talk about, you know, hit us in the chat. But uh, Terry is adding me. I'd really like to see a true sequel to Super Mario RPG. I'm right there with you. Brian doesn't care. I don't. <laughs> really? I was kidding. I, I don't care because oh. I've never played the original. Oh, okay, well. I would be okay. interested in just because it's a new Maybe game. Maybe if those Nintendo. Super Nintendo games come to the Switch, you could try it out. There you go. Yeah. Computer robots. And Nintendo is like, what's that, Andres? You want more stickers for the next Mario game? Paper Mario game? Okay. Yep, that's me. I'm just sending a ton of letters. Give us more stickers, please. 764. Mario RPG remake in the style of Link's Awakening? Oh, that'd be gorgeous and a half. Absolutely. Shadow of Nexus. How about... Mm. <clears throat> How about if this is just a next-gen system and not the Switch Pro? The Switch can be the new 3DS. Uh, I think I, th I, th Nintendo, I think Nintendo still needs to t stick with the portability. I have a hard time believing that a traditional home console is gonna really work for Nintendo moving forward. Like, what would the home console offer that will distinguish itself that will allow it to sell? I just I don't. I don't see it being worth it for Nintendo, especially with this era of diminishing returns, right? Like, yes, um, you know, game systems are becoming more and more powerful, but also the differences are becoming more and more negligible. And mobile technology, as you brought up earlier, Brandon, is growing exponentially, right? So it's getting to a point where, hey, they can pull off beautiful games with portable hardware. I mean, they're already doing it, but it's always gonna get even better by next generation. On top of that, if there is like a, if they do have like a pro-like set with a, with an additional dock, maybe going to the next generation, they could have two different SKUs. They could have the standard set and they could have the enhanced set. Like maybe that that's an option for them moving forward. I don't know. Uh, I just I don't I don't see Nintendo really finding success, um, not going with the the Switch mm -hmm. mobile route. Like they could It'd try it, but so they probably wouldn't do well. To go from a hybrid system to just a just a normal system again. Right. The the only thing I could see them doing is like I mentioned with the dock thing where they just have a more core centric version that's a premium version, right? So like I like they, we think that they're going to do it with the normal switch. If they're going to do it with the normal switch, they may have that option earlier on for the for the switch 2 as well, right? If they think that there is a market to have people that have just a, a Nintendo system that just runs games as perfectly as possible. But it would have to sure be like a, would... additional thing, not like their I main... I don't think they would do that right away. I think it would mm. be a few years, just because the marketing for that would be weird. I yeah. Think. Yeah, it makes sense. Hmm. Or worry. Shout out to Nexus Anatomy. What if the Switch becomes a new 3DS? Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think that's going to happen. I think the Switch Lite is that new 3DS. Not the normal Switch. Sabbath 64 added me. So what you're saying is Nintendo might never go back to making traditional home consoles. Yep, pretty much. I don't see why they would. In fact, it's not even just Nintendo though. The industry as a whole is moving in a direction where traditional home consoles, like that line is gonna continue to blur, right? Like there is this concern that we're gonna move towards like cloud gaming, right? And it, you're no longer be able to put in discs or cartridges into your systems. It's all gonna be digital. like. I'm not saying it's going to happen immediately, but that has been the direction of the industry for a while. The, the traditional console, the, the way we've known it growing up, is not going to be the same. right? The Switch already isn't. 
right? Uh, we know that the Xbox is coming out with an all digital cloud version, something coming soon yeah, it's as well. Out. Yeah, the Xbox sad. The Google Xbox sad. Um, and then of the course is Google Stadia, but that does not look like it's it's going to go over well. But of course, Microsoft has their own platform, their own cloud platform that I think is a better shot at succeeding. So you know, it's just yeah. I I, I think seeing things like I think the most successful form of this has been Game Pass. Mm -hmm. Like Game Pass has actually been successful. Right. Like it's, it's it's caused people to like it's it's earned Xbox a lot of money. Mm hmm. Absolutely. So yeah, I mean, and Mastermind, I I'm not necessarily excited about cloud gaming per se either, but just kind of like. I'm not saying it's all going to be cloud game moving forward. I'm just simply saying that what we're, what we should expect for home consoles moving forward is going to change. Like next generation might be the last generation with traditional home consoles, right? The PS5 and Xbox Scarlet might not even be considered traditional home consoles anymore. We don't know the full feature set of them yet, but you know, based off rumors, they're going to be beasts. So, you know, they may still be traditional home consoles but they're going to be very digitally invested and it's not you know like I, I that's just kind of the direction we're headed in so i think with nintendo by having it be mobile that enables them to kind of you know not go full digital as much right like that the, the, they can still have that tangible hardware and that's going to allow them to be very flexible because the thing is with the switch right it's all about the form factor or the rather the adaptive form factor because you can play it in different ways so it, it makes it more valuable than just playing games on a tablet or a pc because it can do all those things in one right so that's what makes the switch so unique so they need that especially with where we're headed with the industry yep yep i don't think the switch would be even close to as successful as it is if it was just a normal home console even if it was much more powerful mm -hmm. yeah they're just they didn't succeed with the Wii U. I mean, what was the last time Nintendo succeeded by having a traditional home console? Super Nintendo? No, I'm not, I'm not joking. Think about it. The Wii U failure, right? Uh, the Wii was not a traditional home console, right? It was very weak. It was basically an overclocked GameCube, right? And it, had, it, it was packaged in with motion controls. Right, that's why it was expensive. The motion controls, like it, the system itself, was not really mu that much different from a Wii. I mean, from a GameCube. So that was not a traditional home console. The GameCube was a traditional home console, but it's the second worst selling home console. Right, it did worse than even the Xbox, which was at the time it was Microsoft's first legit full-on foray into the console industry, and the Xbox edged out the GameCube. So that didn't do well either, sales-wise. I'm not talking about quality-wise. I'm talking about sales-wise. Right, N64. I would, I, you could make the, the argument that the N64 did relatively well, right? But Nintendo lost a lot of third-party support then during that generation, mainly because of the sticking with cartridges, right? Which were a lot more expensive to put games on and they could not store as much space. So that affected like, um, like for example, having a bunch of audio files and, and like video files in there. So that pissed off third parties a lot, not to mention that Nintendo just pissed off third parties from before with all their controls. But, it, you know, so the N64 actually, it did better than the Saturn, but the PS1 destroyed it. But the N64 came late into the into the market, right? It came out more than way like if I remember correctly, I think PS1 released by it it's kinda of like dependent upon the area, but at least a year in some areas was two years. So, you know, the N64 was late. Um and so yeah, so the N64 did okay, right? But it was really the Super Nintendo that was the last time Nintendo was on the top with a traditional home console. This is the early 90s. I was born in the early 90s, my entire life. Like, it's, you know, I, I haven't really been had that conscious. I have never been like, you know, you know, when you start when you're first born, you don't really, you don't really know what's going on, right? Like, it's not until like around 405 that you start like remembering things. So since I've remembered things, Nintendo hasn't had a home console that is a traditional home console that's been on the top, right? Like maybe I vaguely remember the end of the Super Nintendo era, like vaguely. So, um, yeah, it, I don't think Nintendo really, it, they just haven't. They haven't had success in yeah. decades with a traditional home console. So I, I just don't think that's the way for them to go. No. 
I mean, I don't mind. The Switch is the best... Like, I feel like the Switch is the best environment for a Nintendo, like, ever, right? And I'm still getting that home console experience. And that's fine with me. I want the home console experience, and that's, the Switch offers that, but also portably. So, what I, I think our best case scenario is hope for that Switch Premium, right? That the Switch Pro, so we can get closer to that traditional home console experience, would still maintain the portability. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, let, let's see what's the chat here. Terry, uh, Microsoft should help Nintendo with its online service. I love that. I don't think it's gonna happen. Not this generation. Computer robots out of the both of us. Remember, so remember, no sugary sweets before Nintendo Direct because we don't want a Link's Awakening and Banjo Kazooie announcement for Smash. Sorts of crazy. Oh, I don't know. I'm, oh, I'm okay with that. What we need. I'm okay with that's that. Kind of crazy you want to see. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I heard that Mountain Dew is not good for you. Like apparently, like it's bad for like your testosterone yeah. levels or something. Say. Yeah. Shout out Nexus. What about digital only Switch? Mmm. No. no, because storage. No. Storage is already an issue. You know. Not this gen. Sabbath. Yeah, I see your point now, Andres. I mean, the Switch changed the game for traditional home consoles for a good reason. I mean, look how successful the Switch has become. Absolutely. And it's not just the system console sales. Look at game sales. Game sales are astronomical. Fire Emblem is going to be the best-selling Fire Emblem. Mario Kart is going to be the best-selling Mario Kart. Fire, Ma- Zelda is going to be the best-selling Zelda. Smash is going to... Well, Smash might be the best-selling Smash. Like, Mario Odyssey might be the best-selling 3D Mario. Like, all these different franchises from Nintendo are on pace to do really well. Third parties are doing really, really, really well. This system is selling software and hardware just incredibly well. Like, the Nintendo has found the right formula for them. Yeah, and I think when we do eventually get a Switch Pro, I think third-party sales are going to be better because the versions will be better. Mm. Um, I think one of the reasons why third-party... It, it sees success, but it's not nearly... It's, like other games like indie games sell like better on the switch than the ps4 and the xbox one combined yeah you don't see that kind of thing with third parties you see like okay the switch sold half as well as the xbox one version and third party like it did okay it's just not doing great and i think the problem is that the third party like you're getting a better gameplay experience on the other consoles you're getting 60 fps you're getting better resolutions you're just it's, it's, right. it's a better game even though the whole game is on the switch it plays better on other consoles so i think once we get like a pro and we are once and that next gen rolls gap down, is is no longer as large which right. we have we're going we are going through diminishing returns by next generation there will be a gap but the gap will not be nearly as large at least now you're getting third parties mm-hmm. right on the wii multi-platform third-party games were not an option yeah there were third-party games but they were developed with the switch and with the wii in mind right they weren't there was two separate development teams with the switch at least they can pour over the game you know they may have to use an additional team but it's not it's the same game just being scaled down right reworked it's not a completely different game now you know moving forward with by switch 2 hopefully you know it it just it doesn't look as noticeable like maybe they can still hit the same frame rate right but just not 8k maybe it's just like 4k upscaled or something however i don't i don't know how crazy it's going to be next gen but it's going to be crazier than it is now yeah right so a mastermind added me i'm not much of a fan of the digital games because it's much easier to get rid of in case of licensing issues like the simpsons pt scott pilgrim and the most recent ducktales remastered I, I mean, I, I can understand your concerns about that. I, I I get it. Enjoy physical games, but, you know, if, if you buy physical games, there's that, that's something. But it, it, the, thing, the issue is that digital makes more sense for the, the, the companies, right? Because it's cheaper for them to make. They don't, they don't, there's no hardware they have to, there's nothing physical they have to make they just oh there it is you bought it right and it also cuts out the middleman as well so they so when when we buy digital that is so much more beneficial for video game companies it just makes them way more money it's a lot easier for them on top of that right oftentimes if someone does buy another system with a new account if they want the game they may have to buy it again as opposed to just putting it in there that is kind of like a consequence of that as well so it is definitely not the most consumer-friendly thing. I get that. But at the same time, 
it's really convenient to just have all your games all in one place without having to switch out anything. Especially on the Switch. Right. Especially on the Switch. Yeah. So, and on the other platforms, like the Xbox, you have to download the whole game anyways, even if you buy a disc. So right, it's, like, it's so dumb because you not, that? like if the game's already installed on your hardware on your hard drive, why even put in the disc? Like they just do that just to make sure you're not like, you know, sharing it around. Mm -hmm. It's lame. It really is. Yeah. It, it, it's kind of like reality. It's not what I want, just what it what is happening. I do like buying the re, um, cartridges for fifty dollars at Walmart, though. Every game, every new game at Walmart, just ten dollars cheaper. It's nice. Mm -hmm. Like Fire Emblem, except, I got fifty bucks. Now Martin. they're starting to like take games off shelves. Well, actually, I got Fire Emblem digitally, so I had to pay for sixty. But um, eh, doing... still... Walmart has the, their the whole gun violence thing. I think that was just yeah. a that was just a, a moment thing. It's not really gonna be a future thing. Yeah, hopefully not. Yeah. Peter Robots, Master. He added several people, including myself. He added Mastermind. So thank you so much for bringing what I wanted to ask you guys in the chat. And I'll just restart on what about Nintendo? Do you guys prefer physical or digital games, and why? Well, I guess we just kind of already talked about it. Um, yeah. I like I... having physical games because it's you know you have that memory, right? It's nice to look at them when you ever see it. Like, I don't know where my Mario Maker is. Oh, I guess I lost it. Huh? Oh no, it's right here. Of the world just stares at my boots. <laughs> like I just, I just had this back here. I don't, you know, I just, I like looking at this. Like this is pretty. I like holding it. There, there is something to just having this here, right? But yeah, I, I just love me, how it looks. But the only reason I would get physical over digital is because I can resell it. To be, to be honest, I never save my boxes or my games from one gen to the other. I always sell them every single time, unless. The next generation is backwards compatible, so I can just use the same cartridges on the next system, right. and I won't. But like, I don't have any Wii U games anymore. I don't have any Wii games on any game. I don't have any games that I used to own on other systems that aren't backwards compatible anymore. Like, I just don't keep them. I'd rather get something like an amiibo or a poster or something like that for physical media. And I like the fact that I can just have everything always in my Switch. I don't have to carry around a bunch of different cartridges. It's convenient. Not all the time. So for me, it's kind of like a mix where uh, it depends on the kind of game. Like, I tried to get Fire, Fire Emblem Physical, but it was sold out wherever, everywhere, so I ended up just buying it digitally. But, you know, I, I, I for some games that I think I'm, there are going to be like my more favorite games on the system, like the Nintendo games, I will probably try to get the, the retail version of it. But for most things, I would have digitally because, like you said, Brandon, it's just way more convenient. Mm -hmm. Too lazy to switch yeah. out the cartridges. Yeah, I usually get physical these days because I, I, I kind of need to resell them to afford new games sometimes. Uh, I, I, get, I understand that, too. Like, if I didn't have all my Wii U games, like, physically, I would not have been able to afford two Switches at launch. Right, but, but at the same time, things. though, game companies don't want you selling your games, right? Because they make less money that way. Right, like GameStop wants you to. Them. They, they want yeah, because they they want but all if you if, they, if you don't, they're going out of business, and they probably yeah, will unless they change something dramatically real soon. Lil Squirt, he added me. You think Microsoft will start releasing certain games on Nintendo consoles as well, like Halo? Because it, it was rumored that Halo Five was going to release on the Switch on the Switch. Yeah, uh, Master Chief I don't Collection. Think Halo 5 would. Yeah, it would be Master Chief Collection that that's been rumored, and I do think it's highly likely. I think. Right. Um. With each Microsoft announcement that is confirmed for the Switch, it becomes increasingly more likely. We got Cuphead, we got Banjo Kazooie from Smash Brothers, now we got Ori. I think, you know, there could be something else. Uh, is it going to be Master Chief Collection? Is it going to be Rare Replay? Is it going to be both? We'll find out. But I do think it's it's more, I believe it more now than I did a few months ago. I think it would make sense for Microsoft to release the Master Chief Collection just because it's not continuing to sell on the xbox it's probably going to sell on steam for a bit um but the steam audience is not the same necessarily as those mm. who are going to buy it on the switch so i think it makes sense to release that on, on this is but, but we're not going to see like the next gen like halo infinite we're not going to see that on the switch no. halo mm. 5 probably won't even see that well so here's my thinking right like we talked about how like both cuphead and or like definitive editions like 
any game Microsoft is putting on the Switch, it seems to be like a quality version of it. So they are they are proving to be a good publishing partner with Nintendo. Um, but uh, as I saw Shadow of Nexus, Shadow of Nexus bring up, he said, keep, but keep in mind, Cuphead and Ori are indie games. They are indie games. That's true. They're not major third-party open-world 4K efforts. Yeah, you're right. Um, but that doesn't mean that there can't be those in the future. So we haven't made that leap yet, right? So once we see Master Chief Collection and Rare Replay announced, that's like another step up beyond the Ori and the Cuphead, right? Because those are perhaps larger efforts. They are, even though they are ports of older games. But that's a you know it's a it's a it's a leap from indie. So we will see what's what's going to happen. But my point simply is is that there's this relationship and intent and the idea that Microsoft is putting games on Nintendo Switch, right? Like, it's almost like Microsoft is like a Sega or a Capcom right now, where they're bringing some of their property and having it sell on the Switch, right? That, 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 that is what it is. That is the exact same type of relationship that's going on right now. And I would even say right. that with the games that Microsoft has put on, they're doing a better job. Granted, the games they put on are of a more minimalistic, uh, you know, root because they're indie-ish, but, mm -hmm. you know, we are moving in that direction, so I think it's more likely than I would have thought a while ago, but we don't know. It's not we, we until we see Gears and Halo on Switch, you know, and it confirmed. So yeah. there, there's I'm that too. I'm not sure if Gears would come just because it's not as popular. Um, but Halo, I think Master Chief Collection makes more sense. It'll be huge, dude. It's huge. And most of those games, like Master Chief Collection, was on the Xbox 360. Like, there's, there's no issue. Right now, switch. now the I guess the bigger question is you brought up earlier, Brandon. Like, could we ever get to the point where we start seeing like day and date releases? Like, a, that I just don't think so. I don't mm. think it makes sense for Microsoft to do that. I don't because think they it, have their Windows Store. They get a hundred percent of every penny mm -hmm. spent on the Windows Store. Hundred percent of everything spent on the Microsoft Store, and then they have the Switch version, which they have to now share money. It makes sense for older games because they're not actively selling right their older games they're yeah. gonna get a new they're gonna get new life on the switch and they're gonna sell more because they're on the switch they're not competing with the switch for sales yeah um it makes sense i don't think that we're gonna get to a point in the in the switch's life cycle where we start getting day and date triple a efforts from microsoft but it doesn't strike me as impossible that we may eventually get there. But I think it's going to be a slow process. I think it depends on how well the Xbox Scarlet sells. Right. I mean, if it, it, there's a lot of fa factors, but at least we're going to start seeing games come from Microsoft. And it may be depend. It may depend, right? Like, so we talked to one of the topics, right? Rare IP coming back to Nintendo. It could mean, like... Where, for example, if there's a Badger 3 developed, that's something I could see coming out day and date on the Switch or Switch 2, right? Someday. But, like you said, like Halo, I don't I don't see that, for example. I don't but, see Halo or Forza. You could port an old, older Forza game over. Perhaps. Right, yeah, and actually we've heard about one. Um, I, think, I think it's like a mobile version of it, though. But my, my point simply is, though, is that there are some... Microsoft IP that would make sense to come out on Nintendo at the same time, if not exclusively, like a Banjo Kazooie game, right? If right. there's a new Banjo Kazooie game, Banjo 3, it would make sense for it to come on the Switch. They would make way more money on the Switch than they would on any Xbox, guaranteed. So, it depends. Yep. Uh, where are we? I mean, you know, there's lots of com lots of different comments here, but it's already past midnight. We are at the three hour mark. So I think I'm going to call it a night. Brandon, do you have any closing thoughts? Um, yeah, I, th I. What were we? What was the actual topic? Oh yeah, it was about the actual direct. We've been going on for comments so long. Ooh. I forgot what we were actually talking about for a bit. Right. I'm hopeful we could see a direct late September, early October. I kind of agree with all your points, though. I could see Banjo coming out early October. I don't know if they necessarily, I didn't mention this earlier, but I'm not necessarily sure that they have to release Banjo before announcing the next character, but it could, it would make sense for them too. Right, I mean, you're right. It doesn't have to be. Like, these are all 
my predictions are, are assumptions based off historical precedent, right? Like what the pattern suggests. But that doesn't mean Intel's going to follow the pattern, right? Right. So you don't know. I do think it makes sense for the Direct to definitely be after the huge wave of games coming out in September. Because you're going right. to want to have... You're not going to want to overshadow them with new announcements. Right, so October, I think, is... October makes sense. So we'll, but we'll see, man. Watch it they announce it tomorrow. Be like, ah, we were all wrong. Damn it. <laughs> Shit, the goddess. But it's fine. Got him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You all have a good night as well. Good night, little squirt. Wait, your birthday is October 29th? Liar! I'm just kidding. I, I am not assuming you're. That's my birthday. That's all. I that's all I'm joking about as well. Yeah, the yellow kazoo. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's just let's should just have a direct on all of our birthdays every day, 365 yeah. days of the year. <laughs> all right. Good night, guys. Just, what? What just did you say? One second of a direct every day, like like a couple seconds. They just release a couple seconds of each direct every day, 365 days a year. Cool, cool. <laughs> yeah, I... I don't know. I I don't... I, I think... I'm, I'm, you know what? I'll delete my birthday. We don't need my birthday. You guys, one of you guys <laughs> can take it. Uh, so, but anyways, thank you everyone for listening and watching. Make sure to check out Brandon's channel. What about Nintendo? Link to his channel is in the description below. Leaving a like would be appreciated. I, I'm not just saying it like it would be. Like, it would make me happy. So, yeah. Anyway, Nintendo stuff's coming out this week. Stay tuned. Have a good night, guys. Or whenever you watch this, because this will be archived. So, take care. Yeah. See ya. Bye, guys.